I created a school a couple of years ago, and now we're going into our third season where I think we could make a bowl game. We had numerous tight finishes last year that we came so close to pulling off like this one against number one Michigan, and even though we've gone 1-11 and 3-9 and and so far, our best player, halfback Ben Fowler, is a senior, and so are the top two wide receivers on this team. They want to win something before they graduate, and now sophomore tight end Jackson McGowan is eligible. He transferred in from LSU and is our highest overall player, so even though we're projected to be one of the worst teams in the country, I have faith in this roster. What's crazy is we're supposed to be better than our rivals Eastern Michigan, and just like last year, we have every college in the state on our schedule. Maybe we can finally win the Michigan MAC trophy, and I did redshirt a few key guys like freshman Kurt Butler, but what I'm super excited about is having an entirely new starting front three, and we only have two preseason MAC All-Americans in Matt Land and sophomore cornerback Andrew Monroe, who are both on second team, but I'm not worried about it because between Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana, I've found some amazing talent. The first person I want to mention is Thomas Jones, who's an 80 overall fullback that will probably move to tight end. Then there's cornerback David Conception, who was a plus 10 gym, and we've got to beat out our rivals for the three-star recruit. There's also Juco's Danny Johnson and Fred Miller, who would be amazing additions, but 75 overall quarterback Brian Johnson is who I really want. He has 80 speed, throw power, and throw accuracy, and I'm trying to bring in Chuck Johnson to protect him, while also getting him receivers in Dante Moss and Bruce Holmes. And our final target is 79 overall Joel Johnson, but we have a slight problem because he grew up as an Ohio State fan, so it's going to be hard to win this battle even though we found him as a gym because they're always going to get a lead on us. However, Andrew Luck's been heading out to his games to check out his performances, and right before we hop into our first game, you'll see that Ohio State hasn't offered him a scholarship, so we're sitting at the number one spot. Because I want to try and close out some of these battles early, I think we're going to have everybody visit in week five versus Akron, and our schedule was set up weird, so we had three straight bye weeks, but now it's time to hop into our first game versus Kent State, and they've lost two of their games, so Lee Corso thinks we're going to win. I wasn't expecting this, but our best three players are actually better than theirs, and we have got to start out this season with a win. To make a bowl game, we're going to have to get six of them, and our non-conference matchups are Michigan, Michigan State, and Notre Dame, so these MAC games are a big deal. On Kent State's first play, they're already picking up 10 yards, but we have a lot of new freshmen out there that are going to have to get used to playing, and one of those guys is free safety Steven Anderson, who I'm going to get over to make a tackle, but he got stiff-armed into oblivion, and right now Kent State's offense is doing whatever they want to us, as Allie Fisher is going to break that tackle, and I don't think anybody's coming close to stopping him. They're already scoring. I did not not expect our defense to give up points that quickly. And with this slider set I'm using, you all said in the comments that I have to work a little bit to get the players warmed up. So we're going to try to complete short little passes underneath like this one to freshman Ryan Wilson, who's not reaching the marker. It is unfortunate that we've been held to a three and out. I thought there was tons of open grass in front of him, but he is not quick enough to get there. This punt is going to pin them back decently though, if Garcia could ever go down. Come on boys. We cannot let the golden flashes beat us. This is one of our best opportunities this season to get a win and their quarterback Jaron Lewis will not go down. So so it's looking like a rough start for us, but Jermaine Wayne got in there. And on second and nine, they're going with a pass where I'm going to pick that off, but it's dropped. Steven Anderson had it in his hands. And the freshman was so close to coming away with that one. Now they're picking up this third and long. So that is so unfortunate. Kimber got into that hole where he didn't make a tackle, but he slowed down the running back, which is all that matters. On second and nine, we have them boxed in man coverage until McCray just broke free. We're going to miss multiple tackles on him. And Krishan McCray just put Kent State up 14 to zero. I have set the bar high, expecting us to try and compete for a bowl game this year. But right now, we're looking like a team that might not even win a game. That's fumbled away to Alexander. He's picking this ball up for another touchdown. And what has happened to our offense? We might as well just let Ryan Pace try and sling it. He's going to find Carlos Castillo, who's going to come away with it for like 28. And so much for trying to run the ball. Matt Land's going to get open on the hitch route where he can take this around the defense for extra gains. And now we'll let Ben Fowler pick up the first down for us. But he's not getting much more than that. And if we're going to pull off a comeback, we have a very long way to go. I feel like we didn't even play that badly, but I have to remember that these sliders are going to make things very difficult, and I have to look at other routes besides just the halfback on these halfback slip screens, because against Michigan, we could have won last year. I tried to read all of the comments, and when I looked back on that, that was a really hard one to see. Scott Thomas catches this, but again, it's third and inches, and freshman Ryan Wilson's going to take this handoff for more. I'm fine with him being our backup halfback until Ben Fowler graduates. He reaches the end zone, and I wish he wasn't a Juco, because he's the best player in program history. Let's see what Kent State decides to go with on this drive, Jeremiah Wayne is going to completely miss Jaron Lewis. So that's not an ideal start, but Robert Kimbert had a chance at getting in that hole, and if Robinson cannot bring down their running back, they're about to score again. He threw him off of him, and Mark Sims already has 54 rushing yards. I am afraid that they're about to reach the end zone again with a route bounce, but they went to him in the flat, and we should probably rock with zone coverage if we don't want to give up any massive plays. So that's what we're going to do on third and 10, where they're just going underneath the Fisher, and no way he just got the first down and reached the end zone. That's the second time that he's done that today. 
today and Ryan Pace missed that pass. So all the pressure's on us and we have got to figure out how to score again. But it is third and 18 and we still haven't looked in our tight end's direction, but that ball would have made it there if the throw got off in time. This punt actually bounced perfectly. We should not be getting them pinned back to the 20. They're gonna pick this one up and hopefully run out of bounds. Garcia does and gets to the 25. And I just wanna get one stop on Kent State where Jaron Lewis is already breaking a tackle and Jeremiah Wayne's gonna miss the tackle. Another player does as well. They're getting past midfield. And our defensive line of all freshmen is not generating the pressure I was hoping for, but Matthew Cowart should have picked that off. And here on second and 10, they're gonna just take the drag underneath and we literally gave them the boost that they needed to get more. If this gets too much more out of hand, I'm just gonna see you all in week five against Akron. But for whatever reason, I have the hopes that we could potentially pull off the comeback against them. And I'm not gonna give up even though they're about to make it 35 to seven. So we just need them to hike this ball quick enough to give us time to potentially get it back. Jaron Lewis is gonna try and escape the pocket. Ben Fowler is gonna get over him though. And I took a timeout because I wanna get the ball back, but they're scoring. So we are trailing by four possessions and this has just gone terribly for us. It's so bad that I'm trying to run the ball on a second and three and Ben Fowler gets about 10, but we're gonna need a lot more than that if we're gonna get points before the half and Land is gonna come away with this ball to get out of bounds. It is time for the halfback slip screen, but Ryan Wilson's in the game getting tackled and we have to burn our second timeout. So I'm afraid that there's a very low chance that we're able to reach the end zone before the end of the half. Castillo came away with that one though. And maybe we can, I'm gonna throw a hot read to our tight end, but that came out a second too late. It's intercepted by Cox. We're not scoring. And we knew that Ryan Pace was probably gonna struggle, but this was not expected from us. That was a cool play and all, but we should have kept this game a lot closer than it is right now. And there's Jackson McGowan's first catch. We might as well force it up to seem to him again right before I got sacked and he might take it to the house himself. He is not gonna be marked down and he found his way in. I've never seen anything like this before, but I'm hoping the refs don't review it because we need all of the help that we could get. And it's time for our defense to go out and do something. We have so many new faces out there. They cannot be a disappointment, but Sims gets another seven and Ben Fowler is out for the game with a concussion. I just saw the injury update, so we are in a lot of trouble. He's our best player as he still plays on both sides of the ball. And now we don't have him out there at strong safety where Fisher is getting open again. And the longer this drive goes on, the more it looks like they're about to get another touchdown on us, which is embarrassing. But it's about time we move on to game number two because they've just broken multiple tackles. Come on. They're going for it on fourth and one. So this is an opportunity for us, but it doesn't matter because our freshman cornerback just let number 84 run right by him. We need Rodney Cronin to be better than that. And aside from his interception to end the half, Ryan Pace has looked incredible as he's going to find Matt Land who breaks free and is going to give us 21 points on the board. I have to hope that we will get things figured out defensively eventually. This is our chance to get a tackle for a loss on Kent State. And on second and 11, they're going with the pass, not another run. So we got him to a third down or not. They threw the ball away on their next play. So maybe we can do it here. I think we're going to have them do a third and short. But the only thing we can rely on is man coverage because I thought the run might be coming and this is our chance with Anderson. Come on, just bring him down short. There we go. There's a flag on the play though and it's on them. So we're just gonna decline it and it feels so good to have the ball back again. But if we're gonna come back in this game, we still have a ton of work to do. The only reason I even think it's possible is because our offense is so good. We have so much talent out there and Scott Thomas just brought in the one-handed grab. Now Carlos Castillo's getting open and this one will go for another 20. But one thing we have not done since we started having success is running the ball and we're threading the needle to the back of the end zone. Jackson McGowan, our transfer tight end, catches another. And our offense is so good, but our defense is not. Jeremiah Wayne has a chance to bring down Sims, but he is going to struggle to do so. And that is our best linebacker on this team. So I don't know what else to do to ever stop Kent State. Jaron Lewis is going to take the sack and maybe we just have to run zone coverage on them. Johnson got in, but again, their running back breaks the tackle. We have missed one on him and this is going to be their 48th points of the game. I cannot believe how much we've given up. We might as well just try to bomb them with Ryan Pace, who put that throw right on the money to Scott. And this kid's only a sophomore, so there are a lot of positives I can take away from this game. Ryan Wilson comes away with that one. But I went in with the expectation that we would beat Kent State, so the fact that we're losing right now is extremely upsetting. We simply haven't been able to bounce back ever since our rough start on them, and we could still get it back within two possessions with about five minutes remaining, as Jackson McGowan is having one of the best debuts ever. I think if we're gonna stop the run, we're gonna have to send in some blitzes, and on second and 11, they're gonna go with it again this time Monroe brings him down, making this a third and four where they need to feel the pressure, but our corner just got toasted and I think they're about to reach the end zone again. This is just a terrible day. Our defense is not him. And with that in mind, you have to wonder how the rest of our season's about to go. We've shown that we can put up a ton of points offensively, but that's not gonna matter. At least it won't if we can't also get some defensive stops in the process and we're gonna get this third and nine to Ryan Wilson, who's done well for our backup spot, but I'm not sure if he's gonna be ready to replace Ben Fowler next year. And it's gotta be a good thing that we've been able to get him developed in this one. We're gonna find Weber, the freshman up
up the middle. And even though we've been passing all day, Steven Arrington hasn't gotten any targets. This one's going to Ryan Wilson again. But we're going to look in the sophomore's direction on this one. And it's time for the onside kick where our freshman kicker is going to put that around where it needed to be. But Kent State is going to recover it. This is one of the most embarrassing defensive performances we've ever had. We even ran commit and we're still not stopping them. So it's taken us forever, but we have them on a third and six where this could have been intercepted. And Jeff Davis dropped the ball. We still wouldn't have had a good chance, but I would have taken it. And I almost feel like I need to show this drive because Ryan Pace has some incredible stats. But the craziest part is he could make them even better. And we're going with the deep shot to our tight end. There's no way. I know for a fact that we have our quarterback of the future. Now Matt Land's going to create some separation. And this is why we developed Ryan Pace last year. But that ball's dropped into a pick. And that means we're going to have zero chance of coming back even with an onside kick. If we end up recovering this, I'm going to be so mad at Matt Land, but it wouldn't have happened anyway. And Jaron Lewis won player of the game, but Mark Sims could have also gotten it, and he's only a sophomore, which is scary because even though Ryan Pace was 33 for 37, we just lost by double digits on the road, and I've decided that we need to switch up stuff defensively, so we're going to burn freshman Anthony Goodwin's redshirt and start him instead. I also want to make Andrew Monroe our cornerback too, even though he's a lower overall. And although things might seem grim right now, our future projections have us in the top 60 in four years, which might be even higher if we're able to land all of these guys that are coming on a visit. And once again, we're favored to win, but Akron's lost to two decent teams, and they have the overall advantage on us, while also having one of the best quarterbacks in the MAC. It is time for us to shine, though, because we have a ton of visiting recruits to impress, and last year, we only lost to Akron by eight points, so this is a very winnable game for us. We have a lot of confidence in our passing attack after that last one, but Ben Fowler's healthy again, so we have to make sure that he stays getting involved, and I will try my best to utilize him out of the passing game. We had to get some blocks, though, and because we didn't, it is third and 11 where our tight end creates the separation, but it's a bad throw. I shouldn't have attempted such a deep shot with Ryan Pace early on. Taj Bullock's already trying to rush for a first, and I'm ready to try to get into that hole with Fowler where he is not going to be able to get over to Kellum to make a tackle, and freshman Anderson just froze up. Cronin's going to have to bring him down, but Steven Anderson should have prevented him from getting that many yards on us, and come on, boys. We cannot let this season be about how terrible our defense is. Taj Bullock's going to take the sack from Johnson or not. He somehow broke it. We do not have anything going our way right now. Come on, boys. They're not shedding three different tackles. What is happening? Charles Kellum might be a good player, but he's not built like that. And Grand Rapids University is in their third season. But our defense looks worse than it did during our first season. They've clamped up on first down. So now we're going to look in Jackson McGowan's direction, but it was man-to-man -man coverage and Carlos Castillo came away with it. That's a big play from him. Now we're going to feed it back to Ben Fowler, who takes this handoff and uses his speed to try and get the outer edge. But even though he is 98, he does not run like it, and Matt Land did create enough separation, but I don't want to have to sling it every single play to have positive gains like this. I'd like to be able to run the ball at the same time. This halfback screen to Ben Fowler is going to get him out in space, though, and he's going to juke out that defender for the first. So we're moving it, and it looks a lot better than it did on our first one. Ryan Wilson had the edge, but the freshman's not that quick yet. So we're putting Ben Fowler in where he takes it in himself, and just like that, the game is all tied up at seven. If we can't figure out things defensively in this one, we are going to switch our playbook from the 3-4, because I think a 3-3-5 could suit us nicely, and on first and 10, Taj Bullock had nobody open, so he just scrambled for as many yards as he could get. Our defensive line of freshmen is not generating the pressure I was hoping it would on second and three. Again, he's trying to scramble, but that was a great tackle from freshman Rodney Cronin, and we're going to stop him on third and two, where it was close, but it's marked as a fourth and one. What a great ending to the first quarter, and right now, my confidence is through the roof when it comes to our offense getting the ball. I know we didn't score on our first drive, but we did on the second one. Ryan Wilson is trying to get the outer edge here, and he can't, but it's all good. We're going to go with the option run to Ryan Pace, which is surprising, but that's how you keep Akron's defense on their toes, so we can now go to Steven Arrington. Back to Ben Fowler on this one, where I want to use his 98 speed to get around everybody, but it isn't working for us, and now we've gone with a little bit of play action, where I just saw that Carlos Castillo burn his man and got more, and I'm trying to say the Spanish name correctly, but I am still struggling to. The halfback screen goes nowhere, so I'd say it's about time where we try and take a deep shot to Scott Thomas. I saw the slant open underneath, but he had him beat, and it was underthrown. It is picked off by Akron. I feel like he just stepped out of bounds there, but that was a bad move. He didn't have as much separation as I would have liked, but I trusted Ryan Pace to place that ball in the end zone, but instead he didn't lead him and we could have just kept it simple. Now Akron's breaking off nine and Charlos Kellum scares me. So we sent a blitz, which is the exact same thing we're going to do on third and one. And they're going to have a wide open wide receiver. We should not let Rodney Cronin get burnt like this, but Golden was better. And I guess putting the freshman on an island is a bad idea. They did miss their extra point though. So our goal is to take the lead before the half and Ben Fowler can not get things going on the ground, but Matt Land is wide open. And I'm not going to lie, Ryan Pace kind of just sold us there. We're going to go for the hitch route, but they swarm to the ball. And all I can think about is the visiting recruits watching us come out and perform this badly against a team that 
hasn't won a game yet this season, even though the punts are good. And remember, since we recruited freshman kicker Myron Cooper, we now have Joseph Clement punting the ball. He was our place kicker for us last year, but I feel like we have trained him pretty well. And when we blitz, we're no longer running press coverage on Akron, which worked out for Taj Bullock taking a sack, but still fighting for a yard. If we're going to send heat in his direction, it's got to get in quick because he's been making some of our defensive linemen look like babies. And on second down, it is surprising, but I'm trusting that we're able to clamp up with man coverage where Taj Bullock can still scramble for yardage. It's like they have a counter for everything that we want to do. And on third and three, I know that that flat is wide open. He's running and we're not going to get there in time with Ben Fowler. So I'm about to have a quarterback spy on every single play the rest of the game. And I know we can stop them because Akron didn't score that many points against us last season. I might have forgotten to have a spy on that one and Taj Bullock wasted no time figuring that out. On first and 10, he is going to run and we have it this time. And on this play, it's Tremaine Wayne, who's a great ball hawk. I feel like everything's clamped up, but they're going deep and we couldn't get back to it. I cannot believe it is about to be 20 to 7 before the half. Maybe we can get a field goal. But we had a deep zone back there and everything and it still didn't work out for us. And I just don't know what I'm going to do defensively this season. We can't get the ball out. So shout out to our offensive line for having some of the best blocking in the game. And I think we're just going to take this one to the half. This has not been the start to the year that we were hoping for, but it's still early on. They're just handing this first play off to Walker where Anderson got over to it. And freshman Steve Anderson has seven tackles already. So I'm seeing some good things out of him, but we've got to hold them on this third and one. And to be honest, I just ran commit. It worked out as they panicked and threw it away, but they also had multiple wide open wide receivers. So we can't do that again. I'm also learning that play action is a terrible idea as we've taken so many sacks off of having that in there. And they are not worried about us potentially running the ball. We're going to take this drag to Scott Thomas on third down, but we have got to get Ben Fowler going on the ground and he's going to try to get to the outer edge here, which he does hit. And that is why we have someone like him. We just have to be smart about what we call and a halfback toss to get him into space is a great idea with this one going past the 40. And whenever Ryan Wilson's in the game, we can just hit him up the middle of the gut. I still need to change his number because 40 is pretty rough, but this ball was underthrown to Steven Arrington. And if Ben Fowler can get the right blocks on halfback stretch, I've seen it go for touchdowns. But even though that one didn't, we're still moving it pretty well. And on third and three, they've sent a blitz in our direction, but Matt lands wide open who's reaching the end zone. With this extra point that we're not going to miss, it's within six. And it all goes back to making the smart reads and not having that early interception. On second and one, I didn't have time to get off a quarterback spy, so of course Taj Bullock runs it. And I swear, this guy must have played running back or something in his past. Now he's throwing a laser on Ben Fowler. And this guy has yet to miss any of the gaps in our zones. But we have deep blues back there, so we still don't get burnt deep, and it doesn't make a difference. On third and five, they're not going to go with the run. Of course they're passing, and I feel like we can generate the pressure. So thankfully, freshman Joseph Kent was able to bring him down. And I'd be shocked if their kicker drilled this, but that looks like it's going to be good. We are still trailing by two possessions, and I just noticed that this play had a play action in it. That is scary. So we're going to resort to running, even if it's a read option. They somehow bit on Ryan Pace, potentially keeping it, and Ben Fowler is going to find the space on the defense. He's going to get around every single defender, and his 98 speed has finally gone to work. I am so glad we have him on our team. And let's end the third quarter the right way so we can go out and beat Akron on our home field. That was the exact sack that I was looking for, and now that we have quarterback spies out there or I user it, we're fine. I even have one on this play just in case. I'm hoping I'm able to get in some pressure with Johnson. This could have been intercepted, but I'm not mad at Jamar Robinson for dropping it because we are getting the ball back. And are you kidding me, Wilson? The freshman almost just had one of the most costly turnovers ever, but it's all good. And we are going to continue to go to Ben Fowler. And this one's actually Ryan Wilson. Look at the speed he has. He is moving so quick that I legitimately thought it was Ben, but now it's second and 14 where they send a blitz in and Ryan Pace is going to get it out just in time. Wow. Having a quarterback with 55 speed is not ideal, but he can run the option perfectly. Ben Fowler could have just taken the first down, but he wanted to get an even bigger play out of it. And he just broke his own record for rushing yards in a game. I'm starting to lean on running the option, even if Ryan Pace isn't the quickest. But if Wilson's going to be in the game, we have got to pass, and that is going to go over to Matt Land. That gives us a four-point lead, and I'm going to go with the same two-point conversion play from the last one. But in this matchup, Matt's going to hold on, and that was a decent run from them. But Charles Kellum hasn't done that much ever since he broke free on the first one. Taj Bullock isn't scrambling, and that's why you put a quarterback spy out there. Third and six now. I'm going to try and guard all of the hitches here, and it's fourth down, so we'll see what they do. I'm ready for them to run the fake, but they are actually actually kicking it to us and Ryan Wilson's back there so he could fumble this we're just going to go down immediately and I guess the zips are going to try and trust their defense but Ben Fowler is that guy he could beat this one last DB and it would have been nice if he didn't get caught but it's all okay we're going to go with the triple option and Ryan Pace is so slow but he still gets the pitch off to Ryan Wilson who is going to get us another first and now we have Ben Fowler back out there on the field but we're going to need him to break off one more big run and that juke gets him a few I don't think freshman Myron Cooper can hit from here as a kicker so we're going to go with the halfback screen on third down and hope we pick it up. Ben Fowler
Fowler's gonna be able to get out there. He had some weird animations, but in the end, he did enough for us to get the win, and that's gonna go down as one of the greatest performances in school history. He had 180 yards on the ground with 29 through the air, and Ryan Pace was a good game manager in our fifth ever win as a team. It's also nice that as a senior, Matt Land's finally holding on to balls. And look at all of those commits. There's like 10 of them. The only player we don't have is Bruce Holmes, who we just took a lead on over Western Michigan. And by the way, that receiver has 94 speed. But then we got the two cornerbacks that we wanted, two defensive linemen that are probably going to replace the freshmen starting now. Quarterback Brian Johnson, who once Ryan Pace graduates, will start. And then tackle Chuck Johnson will protect him while Dante Moss will catch passes and Thomas Jones has moved over to tight end. He's quick, but we're going to have to work on his catching stats. And then I had to go out and find a lot of new prospects to target, where I found two more offensive line gyms from the states we can go after, and also Drew Flynn, who would be a great middle linebacker. He's got 84 speed with 82 hit power, and that would mean that we no longer have to rely on John Williamson developing. While I'm on this screen, Ryan Wilson has decided last second that he wants his number to be number three, and we've got three tough road games coming up with two of them being against our rivals, but at least it's nice to see in the standings that Eastern Michigan's having a terrible year. Michigan State hasn't been the best either, as they barely beat Central Michigan, who we own, and they lost to Northwestern, so hopefully we don't get blown out, because last year we did, and it was all because of Nathan Carter. He ran for like 400 yards on us, and it's gonna be hard for me to ever forget that game, but we're gonna start out with the football in this one going to Ben Fowler, and now I believe that we're actually able to establish the run. This is the read option play that went for so much, but they bit, so Ryan Pace had to run, and now it's time to see the new number three Ryan Wilson take this one, where Michigan State's been letting our offensive line go to work on them, but Ryan Pace cannot be missing throws like that one, because now it's third down, and he has got to step up to hit his target here, but all that's open underneath is Matt Land, and I don't think he's making it. We do have a good opportunity for Clement to pin them back, and I think this one is going to land inside the five, but Nathan Carter's walking out onto the field, and we haven't switched up our defensive playbook yet. He has already taken this one. Ben Fowler's going to have to catch him, where I have stacked the box with seven players, and it's still not working. He's just going to break this one free, and it might be a long day for us. I knew this could potentially happen, but it's only been two handoffs, and the second he's placed his hands onto the ball, he looks like the most explosive player we've ever faced. This could be the final week that we run the 3-4 defense on somebody, and the run was working for us early on, but now they're blowing it up. All of the routes are shaking on this massive third and nine for us, and we do have somebody open, but it's a terrible throw, so Michigan State stops us again, and we pin them back inside the five with the last punt, but this one's not going to be as good, and I don't think it's going to matter no matter what. Wait, that took a great bounce. We just got them inside the one, and I'm playing this so aggressive because I know that they're going to hand it off, but now they're out of the danger zone, and they've dropped all the way back to the end zone where they're just going to scramble and this is going to go for a first plus a bit more. I think it's fine though. It's not the end of the world. Nathan Carter's already going to shed one tackle here. So Ben Fowler is going to have to bring him down and he's not able to do it either. What the heck? That is our best defensive player and even he doesn't have much hope against Nathan Carter. So now it's a second and six where they're just going to go with their backup running back. And this guy's also good as well. He's going to break free and outrun everybody on our defense. So Dallas Hicks is another one we have got to worry about. And I'm not sure what year he is, but Michigan State's got a lot of guys. We might never beat them on this dynasty file, but I have to be a little bit more hopeful and we have hit them with the play action where they just gotten enough people. What hurts is I know that we had somebody open, but we didn't have enough time to hit him. McGowan's going to get to the first down marker though. And there are so many talented mouths that we have to feed on this offense. Wilson couldn't get blocks, taking us to the end of the first quarter where we're going to come out putting Ben Fowler into space, but there aren't the blocks that he needs and that's bad. Third and 12 for us. I'm waiting for that linebacker to get off of our tight end, but it's not going to matter. And we're about to see if we can get a good third bounce on this punt in a row where this one is also going to go inside the 10. What an amazing one. Clement at punter has been a great addition and they're not running on first down. They're actually passing. So we had a chance to get a stop, but that's their first completion of the game. And it's the second quarter. I almost want to run commit and see what happens on this one. Kevin Lewis just had the sickest cut of all time. I didn't think he was going to be able to make that. And we're going to have to bring him down at the 35. Why can every single Spartan on this team run the football? And what is it going to take for us to force a turnover on them? It is now third and four where they are going with the halfback screen and we don't have anybody over there unfortunately. So they've got a new set of downs on us and this isn't going anywhere from Nathan Carter. He looked really good at first but now our defense is starting to figure him out and that was just a bad user from me with Ben Fowler. To avoid going down by much more we have got to get some points on this drive and based on how we've performed against certain teams I'm not sure how we had such a close game against Michigan because now it is third and ten and we're going to take our slant to Scott Thomas but even though we picked it up you can tell that our football program is simply not on the level of the Spartans. And not only does this have to be the final drive of the half, but it's also got to result in a touchdown. Here on second and 12, it looks like we're going to have to just try and get it to Matt Land. But they were ready for it, and we're going to go back in his direction where he came down with that football. It makes
makes me sad our top three receivers are all seniors, but how did they get over to that? It was like number three hit a speed boost against us, and now we're gonna go back in Matt Land's direction where he did get open against 43, and should we take this in? That just gave the Spartans a lot of time, and at least we know that they're gonna be passing the ball instead of running it, which does give us a chance to get interceptions, but sophomore Andrew Monroe dropped the ball, and that was it. We could have still been competitive in this game. Now it's third and five where they're just handing it off to Nathan Carter, and we can burn one of our timeouts because we might as well try and get more points. Ryan Wilson's gonna take this return to the 40, and I'm glad I didn't touch the holding slider because we haven't had any issues with that yet this season, but I'll always be checking the comments and seeing what we can do to make this more realistic. Matt Land's gonna take that one up the middle, and he has had a heck of a game so far. I'm not sure if they're gonna stick with Ben Fowler on this halfback angle route, so we should be able to punch it in, and that was a bad decision. I don't know why I wanted to run the ball, but they were all over it, so we're gonna have to pass with Ryan Pace, and we might have had the slant, but we're gonna dump it to Ben Fowler, and he dropped it in the end zone. Third and goal, I'm gonna look at Jackson McGowan and hope that he gets by that linebacker, where the sophomore tight end puts us back within a possession, and what a way for us to end this first half. Nathan Carter better not take this one to the house. Having him back there on kick returns as well is so scary, but we are within six points of our rivals, Michigan State, who are only an hour away from our school. Aside from Western Michigan location-wise, this is gonna be a big rivalry going forward, especially if we ever get to the point where we can join a bigger conference and start competing for spots in the playoffs. That is a massive sack to get on second down as well. They're not going to pick up this third down. If we could have made a tackle, don't tell me he makes it there. And thankfully, we had other guys to bring him down. So we might have struggled early on, but you can never count us out of any game. And I really want this pump draw to work where Ben Fowler is going to take it. And that's what I was expecting. It makes me so happy to see our offense starting to have moments of success. But I've got to do a better job of not just staring down the halfback on halfback screens. And did Ryan Wilson really just get 12 yards? He's an amazing backup for us, and on third and three, they're not gonna let us get it. But we are going to go for it anyways, and Matt Land's gonna hold on. We have moved the chains and kept this drive alive. But what's important is that we keep on picking up these first downs, and I know that Ben Fowler sees all the open space on the right side. I love how well we are starting to establish the run, and I bet they're expecting another one, so we went with the pass where we're just gonna go underneath the Scott Thomas, and what are you doing? I just wanted to pick up the first down, but now it's third and one, and we've got no choice but to go with the quarterback sneak on this play, which went for five or six yards. We're getting very close to reaching the end zone, but I'm gonna let the clock run into the fourth quarter. And now that everyone's had a chance to catch a breather, we're gonna hand it off to Ben Fowler, but we still haven't made it in. And on third and goal, he gets it. This extra point is to go up by one. And I can't believe we have this lead. Nathan Carter has not done a thing against us in a while. And I am starting to like this 3-4 defense. They think that they're gonna keep it on the option and beat us. But Steven Anderson gets over to that. And having a quarterback spy out there seems to change everything. Kent's gonna have to get over to Nathan Carter where we make the tackle, and we have held them again. There's only four minutes remaining in this game, and we need Ben Fowler to come away with a couple more big runs for us. This could be that, but they just caught him making this a third and two where Ryan Wilson's in. Oh no. We probably should have passed. I wanted to keep running. Clement has pinned them back plenty times though, so that's what I'm hoping we can do again on this one. And look at how good our second half defense has been. 20 yards is insane, but they are gonna keep the option, and I see that they've held up their blocks pretty well, so they can move the chains for now, but that's not going to get them a win. On second and seven, we know that they want to feed it to Nathan Carter, and they do, but that time it went for a bit more than I was hoping, and they're just picking up the hitch route for another 10. I'm afraid that they're closing in on reaching field goal range, so it is time for our defense to step up, and that corner route just got behind the zone. If they are going to score, I would love if they gave us enough time to respond back, but we might have to start burning some of our timeouts, and why is he so open? They just had their running back in as a tight end, and that's going to be a touchdown, but the two-point conversion is important as well, and I was right there. The Spartans mascots literally flexing on us, but their program shouldn't even be in a close game with the school of our caliber right now. We're going to have to get out of bounds, and because we couldn't, we have to use a timeout. Ryan Pace hasn't thrown an interception yet, so I'm hoping he doesn't do it now, and I didn't want to have to take the drag because we would have had to use a timeout, but we're just going to throw it, and that was intercepted. Are you kidding me? The wide receiver I wanted to hit was 10 yards behind this linebacker, and the fact that we're now losing this game by two possessions makes me so sad. We played the best second half that we have ever played before, and then they just came alive here at the end. Matt Land's gonna need to get out of bounds. And when I watch it back, I'm sure I'm gonna notice that there were some reads that I could have taken. Arrington actually got out of that play, and he's gonna spin out as well, which is gonna take it to the crib. So it's nice to see the sophomore developing because he's gonna be a starter next year. And I'm going for the two-point conversion on the off chance that we somehow score again. It didn't go the way I expected, but this onside kick's gonna be recovered by the Spartans, so it doesn't matter. And it's nice that we were competitive, but I feel like we could have won that. I'm proud of our efforts, but I hate to make our fans disappointed. And Nathan Carter's stat line still turned out to be really good. Aside from that late turnover, Ryan Pace played pretty well again. And I really don't have 
anything to be upset about because I'm proud of what our offense looks like. Now we return the conference play where there's five undefeated schools in our division, and if we're going to make a bowl game on this remaining schedule, we're going to have to play extremely well. After losing at number one Ohio State, Northern Illinois has gone on a four-game winning streak, so this is going to be a tough one going into their place, especially since our defense is ranked 121st in the country, and they have a very solid wide receiver and halfback duo. I'm worried that we're going to take our third loss of the year, which isn't good, especially since we're probably all looking ahead to the Central Michigan game, but we've got to lock in if we want to pull this one off, and they're starting it off with a halfback screen that goes nowhere. It's a good thing that Lawrence McLaughlin's injured, who is their star halfback, and they're using a backup against us, but I can already tell that we're going to need a quarterback spy for Neven Cremasoli, and come on boys, we've got to put our hands up in that situation, because there were two of them that could have made a play on that ball, but now Dozer the third's taking this one, and his teammates just blocked him. That should have been a touchdown, but I see Lawrence McLaughlin out there on the right side of the field. I need to get over to the flat to hit him. He is huge. What on earth? He just broke two tackles from us, and are you kidding me? This is the guy I was worried about, but he isn't starting, and we are already trailing 7-0. to We're going to start off with a pass, and I was hoping just a dump off would help Ryan Pace get warmed up, but it's already third and eight, and we have this slant over the middle of the field, but it's picked off by Finley. He was able to get back to that ball, so he has turned it over again, and that makes it four straight games for him with an interception. Here on second and six, they go with another run, and we had a slow start, but I feel like we are able to get them off of the field if we could have had a zone over there, but I guess the five yellows in the cover two just decided to leave him open, and I feel the need to run commit on this play, but they pass, so unfortunately for us, we're going down 14-0. to zero. I'm ready to take on Central Michigan already because this one's not looking good, but we came back after going down 20-0 to zero last week against Michigan State, so we can do the same today. Here on third and seven, we're going to have to try and just hit the slant on a delay. They have players over there, though, and there's another interception for Ryan Pace. I knew I was trying to fit it into a window, but the problem with that is somebody was wide open open and I missed him. The pressure against Northern Illinois is simply too much for our team. Are you kidding me? Deshaun Pipkin already has two touchdowns and this is the worst we have played all year. We're going to try to go over the middle to our tight end who comes down with it, but we are already trailing by far more points than we should be. And of course, we don't start playing well until we go down by this much. I don't even want to run the ball. We just have to continue to try and sling it because if we want any chance of making a comeback, we're going to have a lot of work to do. And I'm going to fake this field goal. If we're able to get this off with Zach Keys, it would work. But the scene missed the throw, and even though we had the right idea, it's 21-0 to zero at the end of the first quarter, and it looks like they're coming out trying to run the ball where their quarterback just kept it, so it's about time that we locked up. It's now third and 11, where I'm hoping we're able to generate some pressure. We just got to make the tackle. I clicked off, and it is time for us to shine. We're going to hand this one off to Ben Fowler, who didn't get much, but it's not the end of the world. I'm sure we'll go underneath the mat land for the next one, and these halfback screens were money last season, but they're starting to lock them up this year, which is a little disappointing. We improved a lot on paper, though, and Carlos Castillo is wide open, but Ryan Pace missed him, so he's going to have to go back in his direction on this one, but that isn't going to result in a touchdown like the last play would have. And is it even possible for us to come back at this point? We're going to fumble it away, running backwards. So it is third and 25, where I just had the most inaccurate throw of all time. Browning picks it off, and even when I want to take the check down, Ryan Pace is just going to soar it way over his head. We have got to wake up, because if we play like this against Central Michigan, our rivals are going to embarrass us next week, and we've never lost to them, so we cannot let that happen. On third down, Davis isn't able to get to it. And did they really just pick up a first down here? There's not much else I can do in that situation. Robinson will make the tackle. And what's crazy is their rushing attack's been the worst one that we faced, but they're still up 21-0, to zero, and they're about to get an even bigger lead if they pick up this third down, which they do. I wasn't able to get over to this ball, and I saw that coming from a mile away. But apparently they didn't give it to him as they're kicking a field goal. And this is about the time in the game where our offense finally starts to get things going on the other team. So I'm not surprised that we've already had a decent gain there and we're going to hit Ryan Wilson for another 9 or 10. But where has Ben Fowler been in this matchup? It's been like he's non-existent. We just fumbled it again. And I'm just going to let him go to work on this play and hope that he picks up a big gain. But that didn't happen. So it's 3rd and 17 where I couldn't take the corner route and they have held us again. It would be so nice if they just took this game to the half instead of trying to score even more points on us. But we are not able to come away with interceptions. And are you kidding me? They have a corner route on this next one. In that situation, the computer normally just runs out the rest of the clock, but not them. They're different. They are going for it. And they have a guy in motion with four seconds remaining, so this is going to be the final snap of the half, and they deserve to not score any points if we get this interception. But Andrew Monroe knocking it down does the same thing. 24-0. to zero. What a brutal game. And nothing about our offense has looked good, but we're going to have to continue to throw it and hope we eventually figure it out, because we have tried to hand it off to Ben Fowler, but he hasn't gotten anywhere so far. And it makes me sick that we have yet to put up any points against this defense. 
I mean, they're by far the best one that we've faced in a long time, which is saying a lot because we've played some bigger schools, but they're doing well for a Mac one and Scott Thomas gets in. We're going to chase points going for the two point conversion where Ryan Pace takes the sack and TJ Davis could have had an interception in this game. That is all I can think about. I'm over there this time. I'm ready for it, but their quarterback runs. So that's why you leave a spy out there for every single play. And their offense has not been good at all. We have got to stop them on this third and long where they just ran out of bounds. So if we didn't have such a rough start, I feel like we could be in this. And is this another week where we end up coming back near the end and are disappointed that we didn't play well early on? I feel like it might be, but it takes our offense like half the game to warm up. And now they're able to actually do stuff. We're going to hit Ryan Wilson on this halfback screen where we didn't get the best of blocks, but we've still continued to move the ball and they send a blitz in our direction, but it's not going to matter. We're going to find our sophomore tight end. And as long as we get points out of this drive, it's going to be a two possession game. We're going to try another handoff to Ben Fowler where he saw the gap. But I think if we're going to reach the end zone from here, we're going to have to pass the ball. And you know that I want to look in Jackson McGowan's direction, but they locked him up and that was a terrible pass. Every so often, Ryan Pace just misses his target, but we're finding Fowler and it is time to continue to lock up on defense. But this is their first big run. They might have broken it free. I know Ben Fowler has a lot of speed, so he should be able to catch him, but he's going to break that tackle as well. And are you serious? Billy Dozier the third, who has not played well up to this point, just scored on their first play, and now my hope of coming back is all of a sudden gone. We need to have a big breakaway play ourselves, and we could have, but Ryan Pace had zero time to get it out. And I don't think we've run a wide receiver screen yet this season, but it goes nowhere. So it's fourth and nine to start the fourth quarter, and I've accidentally called a punt, which means we have to burn a timeout because we need to go for it here, and they're all over our tight end, so I'm gonna try and hit the crosser, but it's not gonna matter. They got pressure in too quick, and this Northern Illinois team might be 4-1, but I feel like we could have played them better. Steven Anderson missed the sack, and I just have to hope that next week against Central Michigan, we don't perform this badly. On 3rd and 14, Ben Fowler was right there, and they're not getting more than a field goal because of it, but we're still trailing by three possessions, so we have a lot of work to do if we want to come back, and their man-to-man -man coverage isn't going to lock up on this next play, so Steven Anderson comes away with it, but I just know the second I mix in play action, they're going to get pressure in immediately, so I have to make sure that we don't call any plays with that in the playbook. That's going to be fumbled away by Ryan Pace and I think it'll do it. I've been run committing but they're still gonna rush in for a touchdown and we just played like a team that didn't want to make a bowl game so I'm pretty salty about this loss but we're about to play Central Michigan so everything has to flip around quickly. We were able to beat out Western Michigan for Bruce Holmes which is nice but right now they're sitting above us in the standings along with Central Michigan who's 4-1 and one with their only loss being on the road at Michigan State. I'm afraid this might be the first time that we lose to them because Jace Bauer has been going crazy but we're gonna make sure that we wear black because the last time we did versus them, we said it was their funeral, and it needs to be again today. If we're going to make a bowl, we cannot fall to one and four, and we've got some beautiful weather for this game where their first handoff goes to Mecky Jenkins, and Tremaine Wayne should have made a tackle there, but he didn't, and now he doesn't have the speed to keep up with him. That is terrible. It's taken them one play to reach the end zone, and now the pressure's on us to come out playing well where Ryan Pace is going to somehow juke players out, but he also almost just died there, and on this third and eight, he's going to miss the pass. I swear, we can never have a good start. We need this punt to at least hopefully pin them back and it bounced exactly how we needed to. Thank goodness there is a flag though, which isn't good. And maybe we can get lucky. It couldn't be holding or clipping on us. So it has to be on our rivals. And there is no way that we give up another touchdown like that last one. We just clamped up with our man coverage and now we got to swarm over to that hole with Steven Anderson who cannot make the tackle on Miki Jenkins. But it's not the end of the world. Eventually we will get warmed up and we will start to figure it out against them. So I refuse to let this rough start rattle us and we have got to put our hands up. We have players in the right position, but they just don't seem to want to make a play on the ball. Now they're probably going to go deep. And thankfully, we have forced the sack with Robert Kimber. They almost had too much time back there. Now they're hitting us with the halfback screen, and we don't have many people out there. But it is still third down where we have gone with quarters defense, only sending three at them. And do not tell me they're going to get a route bounce. Thank goodness. I was going to be so frustrated if they pick that up. Ben Fowler sees a hole. And let's come out and establish the run on them if we can. Our first drive was cut very short, but now we're going to try and go with the option. And that was a six yard loss. That means we have to throw it on third and 15 and they have so much pressure in there's no one open so again we have been stopped and we just have to hope that this bounces inside the five yard line I have Robinson and it was great this is our chance to force a safety against them and they hit us with the play action for the first down but that was very risky and next time we'll just send more players I want to get into another defensive battle with the team and Steven Anderson gets the sack so that is exactly what you love to see out of the freshman and on third and nine I see that Mickey Jenkins has gone over for the halfback screen but Jeremiah Wayne can get 
get there. So this is a chance for us to get the ball back in decent field positioning, just like the last drive. I think Ryan Wilson's going to have a lot of space on this right side of the field. If he's a little bit quicker, he's going to get even more yards on them. And it's time for our offense to get things going. We are used to having these slow starts, but now Ben Fowler's going to take the handoff and his speed's going to get him 15. So I was hoping we'd continue to feed him, but he's not in the game. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter, where on second and 11, I'm going to be looking over at our tight end, but Ryan Pace still hasn't completed a pass and we have yet to get him going. He's going to try and hit Steven Arrington, but that's another incompletion. So we're about to find out if freshman Myron Cooper has the leg for this kick. And it's good to know that he can probably hit from about 50. We had somebody out there in the backfield, but that is another broken tackle that we have had to witness. And there's just so many of them. He's going to go for his second touchdown of the day, except his teammate just stopped him. And come on, someone's got to bring him down now. I almost want to run commit after how these last two plays have gone. But at the same time, I should probably just stack the box a little bit better. And on second and six, they found Davis. We knew that eventually our defense would start to give things up, which is why we have to start having success on offense again. And Ryan Pace has yet to hit his target, but we're going to try and get him warmed up here, dumping this one off to Scott Thomas. And I'm not going to even worry about running until we start picking up some first downs. What we've been doing recently just hasn't been working. We're going to have to get him into a rhythm and this is going for another eight. So that's nice, but I'd like to see a little bit more by throwing it to Ryan Wilson in the flat, going for the first down. Thankfully, he juked him out and the refs are reviewing something, which is scary because I think he stepped out. I don't know how they could review this and miss that his right foot hit the white line here, but the play has stood. So it is first and 10 for us where Ben Fowler's going to get a few. And at this point, we have completed five straight passes with Ryan Pace. So I'd think he would be a bit more warmed up to hit his targets like you were telling me I had to do with him. But I'm just going to keep throwing underneath because it's working for us anyway. And on third and two, we got a little bit of a wide receiver screen to Matt Land where he was able to find the space. With a minute left in the half, we can't leave much time for Central Michigan to score on us after this. So I've tried to be intentional about running down some clock, but that was a bad throw. And I can't believe that we caught it, but now we're going to take the drag to Carlos where there's 12 seconds left in the half now, and I'm going to go for our halfback, which is open. I don't like chasing points, but I'm going to in the situation and that's not going to work out. But at least we get ball to start the third quarter where Ben Fowler might be able to take this handoff for a lot if he can get around the edge and he was able to plus spin. I am going to miss him so much and we have our tight end, but there simply was not enough time. And now we're going to go underneath the Ben Fowler again, and they're all over him. This is a really big third and 10 and our curl route did get open to Scott Thomas, but nerves are starting to kick in as well in this rivalry matchup. I don't want to make any mistakes. And the result of this one means so much for how the rest of our season goes and what the future of our program looks like. That's why the fact that Zach Keys is out there right now is terrifying. And do not tell me that Ryan Pace is out for long. Okay, we'll return soon. I can't discredit backup Zach Keys too much because he has led us to our two wins against Central Michigan, but I do want to make sure that Ryan Pace is in for this third and seven. And hopefully we have enough time to get this throw out where our tight ends open. McGowan comes down with it and he's going to find his way into the end zone. Now we have got to get this two point conversion and Scott Thomas is open as well. So going into the night, we are up 17 to 14 on Central Michigan. We got to knock him out. And I'm sure that this crowd is stunned, but we've worked our way back in it. This is a very big third and seven where I know what's going to get open. I just can't guard it all. We did though. And he missed the open receiver, but that's okay. We're actually getting the ball back versus Central Michigan. Again, I swear we own this football program. And with all of the momentum still in our favor, we're just going to hand this one off to Ryan Wilson for eight. And I don't know where Ben Fowler is, but as long as we continue to move it successfully, I'm not going to mind. Ryan Wilson has 89 speed and he isn't able to get by this guy, but he has been able to do enough to move us down the field and Matt Land is open. I just want to say Ryan Pace started this game 0 for 5. Now he's 17 for 23. And I know I'm going to miss reads every so often, but I'm playing better than ever. That touchdown gives us a 10 point lead now. And with the importance of this game, we had to turn up how well we were playing against them. That's a bad miss tackle from our defense. We're going to eventually bring him down, but I think it's about time that we send another blitz in. And is that a fumble? I swear the same thing happened against Central Michigan or someone else last year. And that tells me that we need to continue to send in pressure. Anderson's going to bring down their quarterback. So Jace Bauer had nowhere to go. And on third and 10, I'm on the right side of the field. I should have been using on the left. Chris Parker makes it. And that's my fault for not getting the play call out there that I wanted to in time. Miki Jenkins broke that one. But as of recently, we have kept him pretty much under control. We got to stop Young short and that'll bring us into the fourth quarter. I can guarantee that when we get this ball back, we're going to find ways to chew clock against them. We have everything locked up, but we are not generating enough pressure, which is a problem. They're also breaking that tackle. And I'm going to send one more this time. Instead of three, we're going to get four and hopefully that generates pressure. But how did they come away with that? It's gotten to the point where we are going to run commit and just hope that my user can do the rest of the work. We are going to force a sack if we were able to bring him down. But instead, he broke it and Langston Lewis catches the touchdown. I cannot believe that Johnson let him throw him down like that. But the refs are reviewing something. And are they saying he didn't get a foot in because he
because he clearly did. I'm just upset at Justin Johnson right now because obviously they're not going to overturn the touchdown, but Ben Fowler's going to take this handoff and how did he not break free on this one? Their running back would have taken it to the house and ours is definitely faster, but we are ready to lock in and try to run out as much time as possible, which is a little bit of a problem now that it's third and six, but we know that our tight end will get open and Jackson McGowan held onto that ball. Three minutes left here in the fourth quarter versus our rivals. Come on. We cannot afford to lose this game because so much is on the line. Ryan Wilson took it and the fact that he was stopped short for a third and inches is perfect for us. They've had no choice but to already burn through two of their timeouts and we just need one more first down. Ben Fowler's going to juke to the inside. That is going to be game and Grand Rapids University has pulled it off. For the third straight year, the Mastodons have owned Central Michigan and beating a 4 and one team on the road is a really big deal. I feel confident that we can put ourselves in a position to try and make a bowl, which is all thanks to Ryan Pace, who really turned it around after that first quarter. And I have to point out how underrated Ben Fowler and Ryan Wilson have been. Whenever our receivers aren't doing much, the rushing attack keeps us alive. And on the other side of the state, we have this game, which will make a big difference on who wins the Michigan Mac rivalry. I was hoping Eastern Michigan would shock the world, but they got blown out by Western Michigan deservingly, especially since they haven't won a game yet this year. And after one round, this is how the standings are looking, but we won't know who wins the Michigan Mac trophy for a while because we have other games beforehand, like this next one against 4-2 Buffalo, who's undefeated in conference play, and their only losses have come to Boston College and UAB, but we get to host it, so I have some faith in us. And I gotta mention that we also just landed Justin Quinn and Eddie Anderson. It looks like, if anything, we are gonna have to worry about Buffalo's halfback, but I'm hoping our defense comes out strong, and if we can hold him, hopefully we get our third win of the year. After this, we'll then face Notre Dame, and then our two other Michigan Mac rivalry games. It looks like they're already going deep where that was swatted down, but we've gotta pick stuff like that off, and they are not trying to run the ball on us at all. Instead, they're passing, and Joseph Kent's already come away with a sack. What a start this could be for our defense. On third and 12, they're going to the sideline, but it's not enough for a first down, and I'm almost certain that last season, we got blown out by the Bulls when we played them, so we need things to go differently for us this year, and I don't like that our players still need to get warmed up where Ryan Pace is going to throw an interception. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like that ball hit the ground first, and we might as well challenge it to see what can happen, but I have a feeling Buffalo's getting it on our side of the field, and our streak of having terrible first drives has continued in this one where they're going to now pick up a first. Now they're going to hand this one off to Washington Jr. where Fowler got out to him, and I'm going to see if we can shoot this gap with Anderson where we got in, and that makes it a third and eight. We've yet to have a single interception this year, which is kind of crazy. They picked up that third down, and that's because I came out in pass defense, but they were going to run from the start. Having a quarterback spy out there all the time has definitely helped us. This one's going to be thrown right to our defense, but we cannot hold on to anything, and I've pass committed, so I was hoping that's what they did here, but we still couldn't stop him. Richie Watts just threw right at our best player like it was nothing. Now he's trying to scramble on us, and we need to continue to lock up where they have multiple slants out there. They're going over to Gay, but we knocked him out of bounds, making this a third and one where our man coverage has to clamp, but Ben Fowler didn't put his hands up right in front of that ball, and we need to get Ryan Pace's arm warmed up because we cannot have him throwing more picks. Ever since we focused on that early against Central Michigan, he went crazy, but he shouldn't have taken a sack there, and I don't know what target he was trying to hit. I just know that our odds of picking up this third and 17 are not not very good. And we've got to go back to punting it to the Bulls where this bounce is going to have to be before he picks it up. And that was not what happened on this play. Instead, he trucked multiple of our players and Chance Morrow's put his team in a position where they are already in field goal range and we cannot let Watts scramble. Are you kidding me, Steven Anderson? You're really going to let a quarterback like Richie Watts do this to you? The freshman has a lot to learn. I cannot believe what we have just witnessed, but he's still one of the best recruits the school's ever gotten. So I've got to focus on developing him on second and 12. Richie Watts is again trying trying to take off. He breaks one, and I'm going to send a little bit of a blitz his way on this third and six, but that was not the right decision. We can knock it off to a good start, and I'm just going to keep on run committing where they have too much time. So it is 14 to zero already. Ben Fowler's getting a few, but we need to make sure that Ryan Pace is warmed up still, and he almost took a sack on this one. Maybe I need to focus even more on offensive line more than I already have, because we just had zero time versus Buffalo, and they had a good return on the last punt, with this one also taking them to about the 35. I just see things getting worse and worse the longer that this game goes on. Richie Watts juked out Ben Fowler for that one, and it was subtle, but that was one of the cleanest ones I have ever seen. I think that guarantees that they're going to go up three possessions no matter what, and they're four and two, so we should have expected them to be this good against us, but it's nice to see freshman TJ Davis get a sack, and on third and 19, surely they're not going to pick this up. We've gotten in the pressure, so we're going to hold them to a field goal, keeping it 17 to zero, and we need somebody to step up on our offense where it probably will be Ben Fowler. I've noticed that his rushing game has been very inconsistent, and the senior's not even in the game for this one to Ryan Wilson, making it a long third and 10 for Ryan Pace where I need him to be on target, but he just sailed that. I don't even know what to say 
at this point, he has been so off target, which is disappointing because he's had a relatively good year. Buffalo is also picking up these punts with ease, and we're lucky that the refs are hitting them with a flag. If we want to get back into this game, we need our defense to do something, not just our offense having success. And on second and 10, again, they're going with the pass where they're going to get at least a few, but it is third and short, so we could get them off the field, and now we're going to burn one of our timeouts. Hopefully, this is where we start to turn things around, but up to this point, Ryan Pace has completed one of his passes. That's number two, thank goodness, and we need him to get into a rhythm if we want to have any success in this game. I don't understand why he is so off target right now, but Castillo is able to create a ton of separation on this one. He's running for a lot of yards, and we're going to stay in this same formation where we have a drag wide open underneath. You know Carlos is coming away with it. I'm even going to try the play action into a wheel route where Ben Fowler's wide open. They weren't expecting it, but he dropped it. That right there should have been a touchdown, and it is so disappointing that it wasn't. He's catching this in bounds, so we have to burn our final timeout, and my read here is either Robinson instantly, which I took, but he also couldn't hold on. So it's fourth and five, and I'm thinking about taking a delay of game to get points onto the board, but now we have to be aggressive. We go for it, and I'm so thankful that our senior was able to actually catch. We really needed that before the half, because we get to start the third quarter with the ball, and it is time for Ryan Pace to go to work on this defense with a nice pass over the middle to his tight end. At this point, he's warm, so we can start giving it back to Ben Fowler, and mixing in the option runs are where we have started to find success, but we just got clamped. So it is third and 12, and the read is to go up the middle, which is going to be brought in by Weber. Anthony Weber's only a freshman, but he'll make a difference for us next year. And I hate how slow our running back just looked with Ben Fowler getting sent back by his own teammate. We are in another third down situation, and this ball didn't get out in time. So we're about to attempt a 50-yarder with the freshman, which would be his longest kick ever. And I am so proud of him for drilling that one. We shot the gap perfectly, making it hard on Michael Washington Jr. And of all the guys we faced off against, he's had the least amount of success, but I need to shut my mouth. Third and two, I doubt they hand it off again, but they did. They faked us out and he stumbles, so our defense gets a stop. And it's like the second that we get warmed up, we play like we're such a better team. Ryan Wilson juke into the outside, almost about to get around all three of those guys. So now we find ourselves in a rhythm, and let's go right back to McGowan. I'm pretty sure halfback dives up the middle normally work pretty well, but Ryan Wilson has juked to the outside. I thought it was Ben Fowler in the game, and look at this speed. This is only a freshman player, and the fact that he has it all tied up at 17 is amazing. We are on a run here at home, and all the momentum's in our favor. So Steven Anderson's getting all up in that hole. And it is now third and 11 for Buffalo, who has not had that much success on offense all day. Tremaine Wayne's getting over to that one, and that's it. They literally had nowhere to go on our defense. We might as well see what Ryan Wilson can do on this return. He got warmed up with that 50-yard touchdown run the last time, and he also has some great blocks on this one, but I'm sure there's going to be a flag. I already see it. So let's go ahead and watch the refs take it back. And now if we're going to take a lead on Buffalo, we got to go 80 yards down the field, but Ben Fowler's trying to do the same thing as Ryan Wilson, and he can't. He's nine speeds faster, and he's a higher overall, so that's really weird to see. But Ryan Pace is also slow, and he just pulled that off. Now Ryan Wilson is going to find the outer edge again, and he is not going to get caught by that guy. Slowly but surely, I am starting to fall in love with the freshman, and look at that spin move from Ben Fowler, taking us into the fourth quarter in style. If we continue to run the ball this way, we should never pass it again. Look at that. And we're going straight back to him, where he takes this one for another first. The only issue is we need to get another 10 yards, which is hard to do on the ground, but Ryan Wilson does it for us. And I don't know what it is about this guy, but whenever he's out there on the field, our blocks look so much better. At one point, we were down 17 to zero. Now we're up by seven. And this turnaround has been nothing short of spectacular. I don't know what Richie Watts was doing, but somehow he's not going to lose yards on that play. And that is extremely frustrating because we should have held him. He is trying to run again. And this is another broken tackle. But you have to remember, it's because we have a super low overall defense. And I have seen the comments about adjusting the tackling slider, but I think as this series goes on, it'll work out. I tried to see if Andrew Monroe could get a stop on an island there, but he did not clamp up his man-to-man -man coverage. Washington has finally gotten the big run that he was looking for, but I think the refs are going to bring it back, which is a massive deal because now it's first and eight for them, and Henderson just broke multiple tackles. This might go to the house of Cronin, can't make a tackle, and he's not fast enough. AJ Henderson, their backup, just came in and did what the starter couldn't, but with three and a half minutes left, we are the team with the ball, and let's hope we do something incredible on this drive. Call me weird, but I almost want Ryan Wilson out there instead of Ben Fowler, and this is a long third and nine that we're going to need to pick up where we have our tight end and let's hope McGowan makes it there. That was super close, but look who's in on the halfback screen and Ryan Wilson comes away with nothing. It's only the handoffs where he seemed to make a difference, but maybe those have been flukes because he almost lost yardage on this one and how did he not? Another very big third down for us where I just want to go to Scott Thomas underneath and he holds on. So hopefully our game winning drive can continue and I'm going to take those routes. To be honest, we can even try and mix in a run because time's on our side, but pace is slow. And on third and one, we're just going to pound it up the middle where Ben Fowler found that open space in the defense. It has been a 
joy to watch this offense work here in the second half. Carlos Castillo just destroyed that dude. And this is one of the filthiest jukes that you will ever see in this game. I'm not sure if Buffalo is going to try and burn all of their timeouts. But since they're not, we can set ourselves up for the game-winning field goal. And they can try to ice us, but there's no way that we miss it from here. That is back-to-back -back wins for the Mastodons. And Grand Rapids is starting to put on a show. Ryan Wilson also had a standout game. And Ryan Pace started out slow, but he led us to that comeback. Where our backup running back outperformed our starter. Midway through the year, we are just on pace to make a bowl game. And I can't be upset about the Northern Illinois loss because evidently they're very good as they just gave Western Michigan their second loss of the year. And remember, last year we were able to beat the Irish with Steve Angeli at quarterback who's still there. And they've already lost four games, but they've come against good teams besides Syracuse. We have to play on the road though, which makes this a perfect time to get Road Warrior. And we're gonna need that to help out Ryan Pace because the Irish are an 88 overall. And this stadium is packed out for this game versus us. That makes me extremely happy to see. And on first and 10, Steve Angeli's already hitting it to his flat, the great house. But I'm really not worried about it because he struggled last year and that was without us putting quarterback spies on third and 10 there is going to be a flag on this play they're not picking it up but I'm hoping that it's not against us and Anthony Goodwin was offside I couldn't tell you why he was set so far up but they get to redo the down and I hope they don't pick this one up but I'm afraid that they're going to we got to make the hit and how did they get that the Irish are literally emoting on us and that makes me so irritated Jadarian Price takes this handoff where we're not able to bring him down but thankfully he stumbled over if he would have stayed up that would have definitely been a house call they had to get that ball out as quick as possible though because I'm gonna send some heat in Steve Angeli's direction and James has so much open space on this side of the field a lot of green grass but it is all good at some point we will figure things out and I am gonna guard that hitch the best that I can but they're still finding somebody it's been a long drive for the Irish where Ben Fowler delivered the hammer and that is a big play from the senior making it third and four where I'm just gonna stick with the running back and I chose the wrong player to do so it seems like this long drive is about to result in a touchdown but if they're gonna get in they still have a decent amount of work that they have to do and I doubt they run on third and five so we've dropped everybody back into coverage where we are going to get the sack what a play from freshman linebacker TJ Davis and with one drive they took almost the entire first quarter off of the clock but even though Ben Fowler is tired he's got to get out there and this is where Ryan Pace always misses his target so we're hoping for the best here and that's not a first I hate getting held to a three and out but depending how this punt goes I'll either be mad or not upset at all it bounced but not very far and what's scary is our defense did not get much of a break so they're probably going to be exhausted. Monroe's going to have to bring him down. And we cannot have somebody like Steve Angeli running the ball like that on us. Now they're hitting their tight end for another eight, which will take us to the end of the first quarter. And their slow style of play might be frustrating, but it kept us in it versus them last year, which is how we eventually won. Somehow our player just got knocked down by Jadarian Price and he gets to the 27. But this is where our freshman defensive end should be wrapping him up. I don't want to see Brad Johnson get embarrassed like that again. And Rodney Cronin's got to pick that. But I can't get upset because he's another freshman that is making good plays for us this year. And we've simply got to let them learn from their mistakes and develop over time. Anderson stops the touchdown, but it's going to be almost impossible to hold them on the goal line again. And Braylon James has given Notre Dame a 10 point lead. It's wild that this is only the second time we're seeing the ball, but hopefully we can continue to run it like this. And the Irish were all over that one. Now we need to resort to passing on third and eight where our halfback angle route was open, but Ryan Wilson couldn't hold on. And back to back three and outs are really going to hurt us, especially since we're on the road. This punt actually bounced by the returner though, and it's going inside the seven. Thank goodness for someone like Clemick transitioning from being a kicker. And let's see if Ben Fowler can get some pressure in on Steve Angeli where he had way too much time back there for us sending five. I'm never gonna understand how we were able to pull this one off last season against them because you can just see how outmatched we are on every single play, but we do have straps on this one and that throw's going nowhere. If we're gonna get them off the field, I think we had to send a blitz. And look at Steven Anderson making a play. We've got like seven new freshmen on this defense and they are starting to impress me. This is gonna be dropped by Ryan Wilson then picked up, but that's the second second time that he's done that now this season with the handoff to Ben Fowler he is going to have some space on this side of the field and that's a first it's taken us a quarter and a half to get it but I will take it now we're going over to Ryan Wilson for what looks like another one and it's about time we start to move the ball but I do not like a halfback toss in this situation at least if it's Ryan Wilson out there and not Ben Fowler Ryan Pace keeps this one but we were missing our star running back for those two plays and now we're trying to find Matt Land in that gap but I'm surprised that he held on to that football and there is so much space over here but Ben Fowler can't hit it that is unfortunate it. I didn't think a linebacker was going to track him down. And no matter what happens here, I think we're going to go for it on fourth down. But fortunately, we don't even have to as we were able to move the chains and this was swatted away. Every so often, our offensive line just gets shredded and I should have taken something there. But I was scared of forcing it into an interception and we have no choice but to on this one. We had to move the chains. Now we're handing this off to Ben Fowler who takes it to the one. And I feel like there's no way anybody can keep up with him if we give it to him on the halfback.
back toss, which is what I thought. Just like last year, we're in a close game at the half, and Notre Dame's gonna try to hand this off where we're over there with Ben Fowler. Do not tell me they're about to break this one free. Come on. We cannot let them get in field goal range on us. Thankfully, they shouldn't with a halfback draw. And where is Gibran Payne even going? When you do something like that, that's probably the last time we're ever gonna see him in the game. Steve Angeli gets the throw off, but he doesn't even reach the end zone. And we still haven't gotten a single interception all year. Surely I'm forgetting a play or something because that seems crazy to say since we're already past the midway point in the season. But I can't remember any off of the top of my head and Ben Fowler isn't finding the outer hole. I was hoping there would be one in that situation, but evidently we gotta stop trying to run and let's go to Matt Land on third down where it's swatted away. I'll give credit to Jaden Mickey. It makes me sad, but that was a good play. And we're gonna continue to trust our defense against the Irish because it's already third and 13 and all we have to do is not give up a big play. I had him in man-to-man -man coverage. That's a stop. It is so weird that we are this competitive with Notre Dame. Ryan Wilson is gonna juke to the outside though and that will get us to about the 45. And there were no flags there either, but he's taking our next handoff, which did not go well. I'm not gonna lie. He's been disappointing since his last performance, but we're also playing against a much bigger school on the road and that's a good gain from him. I'd like to see Ben Fowler back out there though, taking this one. And I hope we don't have to keep this on third and two with Ryan Pace, but he's gonna have to make it work and he does. Now that we've moved the chains, we can go back to handing it off to the outside and Ben Fowler just got multiple good blocks on this one and he breaks that tackle as well. So unless we turn it over, we've locked in at least a field goal and Ryan Wilson's going to the house. The freshman had an explosive play for the first time today and we have found our groove with Grand Rapids University, but we have to get another defensive stop. We all know Notre Dame will eventually figure it out and I was just frozen with Jeremiah Wayne at the start of that play. So the game didn't even let me try and tackle their running back, but Steve Angeli's about to fall over for a loss of 13 and that is a massive deal. He's gonna keep this one, but Kent should have brought him down there and don't tell me he gets a lot. This shouldn't even be a third and manageable, but it is and he misses the throw, but the refs are calling something and don't tell me that's on us. Thankfully, it was on Braylon James and it looks like they're about to pin us back inside the five, which wouldn't be an issue if Ben Fowler was out there, but it's Ryan Wilson instead and he takes this one out. I was honestly afraid that was gonna backfire for us, but I guess I shouldn't have been. He is a stud as he's gonna get even more rushing yards on this one, taking us into the fourth quarter with a four point lead. It took our offense like three quarters to get warm, but now we're starting to have a lot of success and we're always in these low scoring battles with Notre Dame where we're just gonna hit our flat over to Lewis. I've never used this guy before. So I'm discovering that Martin Lewis is our 47 overall walk on fullback. If I knew that, I would not have thrown it to him, but we need to get this third and two, which we do. And that keeps the chains moving. Notre Dame fans have got to be nervous that they're about to lose again, but we're gonna have a third and long if Ryan Wilson can't take this one for a lot. And I did not hit that hole correctly. I don't wanna throw it into this window, but we're gonna try to force it anyway because it felt like our only chance of picking up the first down and we're just gonna have to trust our defense where this ball is bouncing way too quickly to the end zone. On the bright side, we did start that drive on our two yard line. So it's a good thing that they're in this position now. But last year, this game went to overtime and I don't want this one too. We just got thrown off by Thomas and freshman Steven Anderson still having some rough moments. But like I said earlier, they're gonna learn from those mistakes so they don't make them later on in their career. And I'm just hopeful that none of them cost us the game. On this play, Steve Angeli is gonna throw it right to Rodney Cronin, but he dropped it. And it feels like the defensive backs on this team have like 20 catching. It is third and five. They go five wide. We're in a cover three and he is wide open, but something got messed up there. And with that miscommunication, they've got to go for it where I'm trying to generate some pressure, but somehow they've burned us deep even though Andrew Monroe was back there. That's our deep safety in his deep blue where he looked all sorts of lost on that play, but at least he caught him. So we still have a chance at getting the stop on Angeli. And this could be the clutchest goal line hold in school history, but I know somebody's out there and I can't get back to the ball. It's dropped and Jeremiah Wayne's got to hold on. Third and goal now, where if they went with a run, we probably would have been exposed, but I'm over on the flat and he's getting in. We just went down by three points to the Irish and that puts the pressure on our offense. It is time for our running backs to shine. We have to have a two minute drill and they've definitely outplayed us when it comes to getting yardage, but I'm hoping for the best and we are going to try a few handoffs. That's not working. And why is Ben Fowler still on the sidelines? I know he's probably tired from the last drive, but we needed him because now Ryan Wilson's hurt and Andrew Cardi's out here on the field right now, who's our third string so we had to audible to a different pass and thankfully we pick it up. That took us way too long to pick up the first down, but now I see that Ben Fowler's out there on the field and we have got to get the star into some space where we have faked them out with the halfback screen, but they still stopped it. I'm hesitant to use any of our three timeouts because I want a chance to get the ball back if they stop us on one of these downs. But now that we pick that up, I will be more open to doing it and I should have taken that to Matt Land. Just for an update, Ryan Wilson's out with back spasms for the game and I didn't realize that Ben Fowler wasn't in for this play, so it went to the third string which is not good news for us. I'm throwing a laser straight to the freshman and he comes down with it. I felt like I had to risk it in that situation. Now we're going over to the sidelines back to
to him. And we have to make sure that we at least send this game to overtime since we've now gotten into this position. But I'd also like to take at least one deep shot to the end zone where Scott Thomas might have created enough separation and he comes down with it. I want to try one quick handoff before we kick a field goal, but we have to make sure that we get the right look. And Notre Dame just took all three of their timeouts. I think that this is a hole Ben Fowler could hit. He is going to take it, but that was a little disappointing. Overtime, here we come in South Bend. And this time we're starting with the ball. So if we score, we can't go for the two point conversion. Last year, that's how we were able to beat them. Shocking the world. Steven Arrington's going to get the first. And that puts us on the eight yard line where Ryan Pace is going to step up and find his receiver again. But I think that's Carlos Castillo's first drop of the year. And that's frustrating. I'm still going to trust him on this third and goal though, where he got the separation he needed. And that is why you go back to your senior and put your faith in them. Now we just got to let our defense put in the work and they're going for the deep shot already where we could end it here, which we do. Our first interception of the year is also for the win. And we have shocked Notre Dame for the second time in a row. I know they're three and four, but this is still a huge result. And that trip a few hours down south was well worth it. If you were wondering who made the play, it was our new cornerback who's a Juco, Jamar Robinson. And I just realized that Ben Fowler and Ryan Pace stats were almost identical. And to get this win, we had to throw to 10 different wide receivers. We've got all the momentum in the world going into the Eastern Michigan matchup. And they are very bad as they still haven't beaten a single team, which is good for us because I want to win the Michigan Mac trophy. And that's why we really need Central Michigan to pull this off. Because if they beat Western, that would change a ton. And they had a good effort, but even though they're six and two, they're not going to be able to take down the Broncos. That seals the game. So we're just going to have to figure out an answer for Trace and Burgett. And for the seven or eight prospects we have left on our board, we have a lead for all of them, but we can also schedule them all for a visit versus Eastern Michigan. And we need to get two sacks with a linebacker if we want to lock up my future user, Drew Flynn. So that's all I'm worried about heading into this matchup. And after the result against Notre Dame, we have some full stands, which is expected since we're competing for the Michigan Mac trophy. And it looks like we are starting with the ball where we hand this one off to Ben Fowler, but we need to remember to get quarterback Ryan Pace going early on in this game because of that. And hopefully this halfback screen does the trick where Ben Fowler comes away with it and he needs to reach the first down marker with his speed, but he got tracked down and Ryan Pace isn't getting up. I cannot think of anything that would be a worse start than what just happened to us. Deion Brown's taking this handoff where we are not going to bring him down with that tackle. What is our team doing opening up like this? I'm terrified awaiting the news for what's going to happen with quarterback Ryan Pace. And in our two years as a school, we've beat Eastern Michigan once and lost to them once. So this matchup is for a lead in our rivalry series. And I am all over that with Andrew Monroe. I'm even going to try and take this back to the house. That is what you want to see from the sophomore cornerback. But of course, we have Zach Keys out there on the field right now. And I trust the senior quarterback to take over, especially since he can run the option pretty well. But he won't even have to be out there for long because the injury is only bruised ribs. And I was so worried what the damage was to Ryan Pace. But that is not the worst thing in the world. Ryan Wilson's going to get us to the three. And that's an amazing first run from him where he's about to punch this one back in. He's trying to finish it off himself, which he does. And this is the best start we've had against a team all year, where I'm starting to feel really good about our chances of making a bowl game and getting six wins. Andrew Monroe could have had his second interception, but he didn't get it, making this a third and nine where he was all over that. And why did Cronin not put his hands up? I can't get mad at the young guys. We know that they're starting to get better and Deion Brown gets 10, but they're still marking it as a second in inches and Ben Fowler could not guard both of those routes. We should not be letting Eastern Michigan move it down the field this easily on our defense because the longer we let them stick in it, the better of a chance they're going to have. And I'm going to try to get a sack with TJ Davis, but they're just running it again and we're not getting over to their running back. Elijah Jackson Ander is a name I remember from our first year. And it's crazy that he's the backup now because he destroyed us for like 200 rushing yards. Ben Fowler gets a first. And both of our running backs are off to an incredible start in this game where it's getting to the point where they're starting to split the carries. And I'm not upset when backup Ryan Wilson is in. I trust him to get the job done, but I also trust Ben Fowler. And we don't even have to to pass it with Ryan Pace if we keep running like this. But eventually the Eastern Michigan defense is going to catch on and that'll force us to pass on a third and seven where we go underneath and Ryan Pace misses the throw. Now we have to just pin them back and hope that our defense can force a safety or something. Robinson is getting back to this ball, but Jackson Ander just snagged it out of nowhere. And I did not see that coming on that play, but Steven Anderson's been going crazy and Eastern Michigan's making dumb mistakes. A false start penalty backs them up another five yards and what a tackle from Ben Fowler. Even though he got knocked over. He made sure to still bring him down in the process. They're not getting this, but they're hitting us with a flag. And are you kidding me, TJ Davis? We were going with the sack from him, but that is a very late hit. So Eastern Michigan gets an automatic first down on us and let's make a tackle on Deion Brown. I'm not happy about it, but all we can do is hope that we get some stops on them. Anderson's over there. So somebody explain to me how Max Reese caught that. I was pumped up for Steven Anderson to get his first pick, but all is good. It is second and nine where they hit us with another run and I did not see it coming.
coming. Another handoff on third down where we just froze up and missed the tackle. So Dion Brown's going to get in by getting around our freshman. And are we seriously losing to 0-8 Eastern Michigan at home right now? This is the worst team that we have faced all season. And I think we've been caught looking ahead to our game against Western Michigan next week. It is third and six where we're going to have to go in the flat over to Wilson, who is going to pick up the first down plus more. But that was very risky. And they are blowing up our halfback screen where he has no chance of getting anywhere. Thank goodness Ben Fowler's back out on the field because we need a change of pace. But the speedster couldn't get anything going there and they've boxed our wide receiver screen up. I almost feel like we shouldn't attempt this 55 yarder with our freshman kicker, but we got full power and it is short. Now we know for a guaranteed fact that he cannot hit from 55 yards out, but Eastern Michigan might get more and we still haven't gotten a single sack on them. How do we find ourselves in this position? We have been coasting along with everything going so well for the last few weeks and they cannot get more than a field goal on this drive. I want to make sure they don't. Mikhail Wood's going to come away with this catch and fighting to the five, but I'm hoping they make the mistake of not hiking it quicker. And why do we not have more zones out there? Oh my gosh, this is the last play of the half and I'm not sure how we're going to do. Let's go. That's fine. Wait, are you kidding me? There's a second left. And how did that play not take more than four seconds? What a brutal half of football in our rivalry game. And we're starting the second half off on defense, which is another issue we're going to have to deal with. It's been a minute since a wide receiver has cooked our defense the way that Mikhail Wood's doing it right now on first and 10. We should have picked it, but having two guys all over, it doesn't get the job done nowadays. They still need more. And I almost want to run commit on third and two, but I wasn't willing to take the risk and that's going to hurt us as they are going to hit the outer edge. Jeremiah Wayne cannot get back to number 30 and Dion Brown just put us down by 17. Our schedule after this game is going to get very difficult because I know for a fact that we play teams like Western Michigan and Michigan and making a bowl is not going to be easy. We have got to get this third and nine, but more importantly, we have got to find a way to come away with the win today. And it's been a while since we've let Ryan Pace just go out and sling the rock, but that's what we're going to have to do. On this drive, they've been struggling to stop the bunch set and Matt Land was open for a touchdown, but they got the sack off first, which stinks because if we don't pick up this third and 10, I don't know what to do. And after that sack, we have no choice but to just kick our field goal instead. It is time for our defense to start locking up. Anderson is not going to get over to that ball and neither is Cronin. So Mikhail Woods gone for over 100 receiving yards against us and this just keeps getting worse. I'm trying to send in some blitzes to dial in the pressure, but then they give it to Dion Brown on these big halfback tosses. And we really needed to get a touchdown on that last drive, but we didn't. Dion Brown just juked two of us out and it continues to get worse for us, but Anderson got over to the ball. So he's racked up 10 tackles in this one. And on second and goal, we had three players rushing, which is why we generated no pressure. But as long as they take those flats, we're good. And on third and goal, we got to make the tackle with Jeremiah Wayne where the senior clutched up. We're still going down by three possessions, but holding them to a field goal is not as crushing as it would have been if they got a tutty. And this is the first time we've seen a face mask in a long time. It bailed us out since Ben Fowler just went backwards. And Ryan Pace has got to start hitting his target like he is going to do here. And you can tell that I'm ready to just let him start slinging it and see what happens. That was almost picked and it is. I'm not proud of that play and I've lost all hope. So we're going to challenge it, but they wouldn't even let us, which is stupid because this ball probably touched the ground first. This is going to go down as a terrible performance versus them. And we're really about to lose to 0-8 Eastern Michigan. We had such a good start going up 7-0 and getting the interception. I just don't get how this happened so quickly because we didn't have any turnovers overs until that last moment. And it never felt like we were struggling against them. Deion Brown's not going anywhere, making this a third and 12 where they cannot pick it up and they don't. But there's only four and a half minutes left in this game, which makes a comeback very hard to get. And we're going to see what Ryan Pace can do. That is going to be another interception from him. Dobbs just read him like a book. So you can see that everything's falling apart right before we face Western Michigan. I think our chances of making a bowl game are about to get shattered. Deion Brown gets another first. And we're going to have to play so well in our final matchups. But I have to remember that we took down Notre Dame at their place so we can beat any team. And sometimes in college football, you simply get fluky results. I do like that realistic aspect of these sliders and this dynasty file, but it's also kind of painful because I know that one week we can play amazing and the next week we can come out and we're just going to be terrible. We might as well just try and take some more shots with this one also being picked off right into Morgan's hands. It's just a joke at this point. The game does not want to see us succeed. They're scoring again. And I never want to talk about this matchup again. What happened in that second half was an embarrassment, but I guarantee that we're going to bounce back from this moment and Ryan Pace is never going to have a stat line as bad as this again. There's literally nothing I want to showcase. All of it is terrible, but we might still have a chance at winning the Michigan Mac trophy. And I can't believe all of these guys committed during that terrible performance, but we do have a new linebacker in Drew Flynn. Going into our game versus Western Michigan, they're ranked 25th in the country and we've never beat them. So I'd love to, but how Eastern does versus Central is also very important. If the Eagles aren't able to win, they're both going to be one and two in the series. But Dion Brown ran for an 87 yard touchdown on the final play. And
and you can't even make this up. This guy is only a sophomore. Now, if we beat Western, we could make it a three-way tie. But even then, the tiebreaker to win the Michigan Mac trophy would go to the Broncos since they won it last year. So the war on Route 131 doesn't mean as much because we're out of the running for the Michigan Mac trophy. But you best believe we want to win because we've never taken down our biggest rivals, Western Michigan, and their rank. This is an opportunity for our program to get their first top 25 win ever, and I almost got over to that football, but I wasn't able to, and I just want to make a bowl game, so we've got to beat them. Buckley's breaking that tackle and another one, but it's all good because there's a flag, so it's coming back, and that makes it first and 13 where Jeremiah Wayne filled that gap up, causing Jalen Buckley to get a zero-yard gain, and we've never kept it close, but I think this is the year that we do that versus Western Michigan. We got caught looking ahead to this matchup versus Eastern Michigan, but that's because it's a big deal. We want to win the war on Route 131, and I am so glad we've already gotten them off of the field. Ben Fowler on his first run is going to find the little gap between the defenders, and our offense is ready to rebound back. We're going to try and establish the run early as best as we can, but that's going to be a bad one, and some of these routes are shaking for Ryan Pace on third and 14, but I'm going to trust him to try and go over the middle, and that was a terrible throw, but we can see that as an arm punt, and I'm not going to be upset about it. We should have gotten him warmed up and more into a rhythm, but we were impatient instead, and now Jalen Buckley gets a few. It is a little unfortunate that we still haven't gotten our snow battle, but we got in that hole, and what a play from Jeremiah Wayne. The senior has made for such a great user. There's no way that they're going to pick up this third down, and I'm glad we got over to that ball, but I didn't think they'd actually be punting in this situation, and I will take that. We're going to go ahead and start this drive off with another run, but those have not worked for us, so we're going to let Ryan Pace try and sling the rock instead, and he had to make a very tight throw on that one. Now he's having an off-target ball, so we should probably go to Scott Thomas on the drag underneath on this play, but the corner route was open, and I hate that he has to warm up. These sliders are making it hard for our program to get things going, and that's not going anywhere, but I think it's kept the rebuild realistic, which I absolutely love, and that punt goes out around the 20. By the time we are able to compete for championships, our team is going to be insane, and on second and eight, they're going to hit us with an RPO, but we're going to get out to Jalen Buckley. It's a nice change of pace to have a defensive battle, but the real question is, are we able to get them off of the field on this third and six, and we had three guys over there. I could have sworn that we were about to get another stop, but it's not the end of the world, because it's just one play, and they're in Wildcat, so I ran commit, but they're still going to be able to pass it, and Andrew Monroe drops the interception. If only he could have held onto that ball, they go with the run on third down, and it was a halfback draw, so of course I was not expecting it, but now I see that they're back in the Wildcat formation again, and Jalen Buckley broke that tackle, but I'm still happy with the job that we've done on him so far, and I should stop talking. They keep picking up the exact yardage that they need to keep their drive alive, and I have to guard multiple players over here with Anderson. Now they're going deep, so Kenneth Womack has always been an issue for us, and this year is no different at all, as we just gave up a long touchdown to him on that last play. The goal is to get them to freeze up when Ryan Pace hands it off on the read option, which is what they did, but I almost see getting nine yards as a disappointment in that situation, because earlier on in the year, we saw that as a house call, and this is a tough corner route to hit, so I guess I have to make sure that we continue to keep it simple, but that isn't working either, and these road rivalry games are so tough. Ideally, if this was the final drive of the first half, we wouldn't be in the worst of positions, but there's still like three minutes left, so I have a hard time believing we're going to be able to make that happen, and the second I hike it, you all will know exactly what's coming, but evidently Western Michigan did as well, and we're going to go to our car route over to Carlos Castillo. That is what we were looking for, and Ben Fowler is going to take this one onto the outside edge where he dives into the end zone, making it all tied back up at seven, but we left a minute and a half remaining on the clock for Western Michigan, and they have already toasted Cronin. I shouldn't be putting the freshman on an island, so that is my fault, but if we're going to run man-to-man -man coverage and they're in five wide, there's only so much that we're able to do. That's another 20-yard gain, and the fact that they've gone down the field on us in a minute is insane, but Trayson Burgett's going to reach the end zone. That's the first time that the number 25 team in the country's offense has actually played like a top 25 offense, but they also left us time to go down the field, and look at our tight end creating so much separation on that side. He's going to juke out multiple players as well, so I'm going to go right back to Jackson McGowan if he gets open, but we should just throw this one away. I see that Kelvin Hackett's now in the game, our backup, but that's not going to stop me from hitting him in the seam, and surely Matt Land is going to cook that guy on the curl route, but he didn't, so we had to go to Thomas. If we give up more points in the next 15 seconds, I would be devastated. Come on, boys. All we have to do is make sure that they don't get a field goal, and we're all over that. So I think we've done what we've needed, and on this second and 10, they are trying to reach it. And because Cronin couldn't make a play, they got close, but now he's going to get in, try and get the sack. This needs to be intercepted, and I just want Andrew Monroe to catch some more of these picks. Being tied in the war on Route 131 for the first time ever around the half is amazing, and Ryan Wilson almost broke that one free, but it's all right that he did. We had a good long break, so everybody on our team is rested, and Ryan Pace is going to hand this one right back off to Ben Fowler, who gets another eight, and I have no issues also letting Ryan Wilson go to work on this defense. We have a good one-two combo at running back for the first time ever.
whatever. And it just popped up on an injury report that Fowler strained his bicep, but it also says he'll return soon, so it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna keep him out because I don't wanna risk further injury, and this will also give Ryan Wilson a chance to shine, but he must also be tired as third stringer Andrew Carty's taking this one, and he is reminding me of what Braden Nico was. We're gonna go for the corner route on this third and six, which was a deep throw, but I simply had to trust that at this point in the game, Ryan Pace was warmed up, and that's a tutty. Scott Thomas comes away with it, who hasn't had the best senior year, but midway through the third quarter, we have a lead on our rivals, so I highly doubt he's worried about it. We're gonna stop him on the speed option, and freshman Joseph Kent has really impressed me. On third and nine, they're just gonna go underneath. Fowler gets over the moment, and we are getting the ball back again. After how we played against Eastern Michigan, the fact that we have gone into Western Michigan's place and performed at this level is such a great thing. Ryan Wilson's gonna take it past midfield, and what a start to this second half. We're gonna try and hit him with the halfback draw to Ben Fowler, but there's a reason I don't call those much, and I wanna go with a counter to Ryan Wilson, but they're also blowing that up where he fumbles the football. That's the first time the freshman's made a bad mistake, and they're also picking it up. Ryan Pace isn't catching them, and are you kidding me? I almost feel like I should challenge it just in case it wasn't a fumble, and we might as well see what the refs call. I had no idea if it was a fumble or not, but it was definitely punched out, and that was a waste of a timeout, but at least we have the ball back again, and I can't believe it. We had all of the momentum in the world, and then Ryan Wilson fumbled. Plus, he didn't even get a yard there, so we have to get this third and one, and right now, he is averaging like one and a half yards per carry, so we should just resort to passing, but sophomore Kelvin Hackett just dropped the ball, and our backup tight end cannot be trusted either. We're just gonna have to go underneath to this drag, making it a third and manageable for our offense, and let's go over to running back Ben Fowler. I'm ready to get him into space and let him go to work since nothing else is working, and this is the first time a halfback screen's gonna go the way that I was hoping it would. This should go all the way to the house, and that is a 51-yard touchdown reception for the halfback. That was the exact ending to the third quarter that we needed. Trayson Burgett just stepped up, and if we need to throw a quarterback spy out there on him, I have got that handled already on second and six. I can't guard at all, but I forced him to take the worst route available, and on this third and five, they threw door flat. We had somebody over that football, so now they have to punt it back to us again, and Ryan Wilson, it is your time to not fumble. Just go down, and I'm not gonna try to do too much with you, but if they're gonna put you in open space, you might as well take all of it. You are so good. Right now, I have a love-hate relationship with him, all depending on the result of this game, and that was some tight defense from Western Michigan, but they can't guard Scott Thomas on every single play. So it looks like we are getting closer and closer to securing our win, where Ryan Wilson's gonna hit the outer edge, and he might take this one to the house by himself. He had a rough game all day, but then he pulls stuff off like that. And are you kidding me? We have a 14-point lead on Western Michigan right now? This is crazy. Every single time we faced them in the past, we have gotten destroyed by them, and we can't let them get it going now. And I'm gonna assume that they're done handing it off to Buckley, but I guess not. We forced the fumble on him, and what a hit from freshman free safety Steven Anderson. Maybe we are gonna make a bowl game after all. I can't believe they keep running, but I'm ready for it on this third and four where we send in a blitz, and you know that Tremaine Wayne's getting to the quarterback. Fourth and long. They're going with the halfback screen. We're over on it with Johnson. So our defense has put us in the position that we want to be in. And I know there's nobody over there on that right side of the field. So I tried to hit it with Fowler. And I'm not even mad that we didn't get it because we're one first down away from sealing our win, which Matt Land's going to pick up. And that is it. The Mastodons are taking down the Broncos for the first time at their place. And we might as well just rub it in with this one. They have beaten us so badly in the past two seasons. But none of that matters because we are about to take down a top 25 program. And what a defensive performance from this team. You can see all of the development that they've been having, and we literally just doubled our rival score. This one's definitely gonna go down in the history books, and you gotta love seeing all of their fans being so shocked. But it is stupid that they win the Michigan Mac Trophy, because there was a three-way tie for first place, and they had it last year. If I understand the rules correctly, I think I handed that out the right way, but it's all good because we're gonna shoot for winning it next year, and we might not have Ben Fowler, but we will have Ryan Wilson. Also, besides the early pick, Ryan Pace did very well, finding Steve Thomas for two touchdowns, and we've gotten our final recruit on our board, Victor Taylor. I gotta say, sorting by the highest overall, you're gonna see that there are a lot of guys that are gonna make a big difference next season. And our class won't finish this high, but right now it's sitting at number 17. That's a big deal, but you're also seeing the Max Conference prestige climb all the way up to the sixth best. And if Northern Illinois wasn't so good, we might have had a shot at making the Mac championship. But ever since losing to Ohio State, they've been going on a tear. And if they went out, they're probably gonna sneak into the playoffs. To end the year, we face Toledo, then at number 24 Western Kentucky and number 5 Michigan. So if we're going to clinch a bowl game, it needs to be here. And the good news is Toledo has yet to win a road game. Plus they're missing two of their best halfbacks. So I like our odds of pulling this off and it being a night game makes it even better. This could be the moment where we go out clinching a bowl game and changing program history forever. But we have got to be on top of it. And what on earth is this second down play?
play call. Tucker Gleason looked like he had no clue what he was doing, and I love seeing that out of a quarterback. It is now third and goal where he is trying to scramble for the first and we make the tackle, but him falling forward like this worked out in their favor. It's hard to believe he's out there on the field after a hit like that one, and I'm kind of intimidated because we are evidently playing against a beast, but we have some spies, and there was no way we were letting him get that. Third down and six, where I'm hoping that we're able to stop them short, which it looks like we're going to be able to do, and that's what you want to see out of your defense, but Ryan Wilson fumbled it, and I feel like he's done that one too many times to where we need to take him off punt return duty, but someone has got to explain to me how Ryan Pace is missing that pass. It was like a two-yard one, and I know he can hit this wide receiver mid-screen where we take it over to Carlos for the first down, so I am making sure that we get him as warmed up as possible early on, because if we get into a third and long situation, I want him to make the throw, and we're about to see if he's able to deliver where he misses Matt Land. I don't know what else I can do, and I guess he just needs to develop more because he's only a 74 overall. We shouldn't be having that much success anyway, and look at the bounce on that punt, pinning them back to the 27. I'm feeling confident about our defense in this game. Ben Fowler just died, but it's all good. Jeremiah Wayne backed him up, and I swear I've probably called him Tremaine Wayne for like half of this video at this point, and I don't know why my mind always mixes that up, but on third and 15, we are all over that wide receiver screen. They're trying to hit us with a route bounce late, and there's no way that we don't get a sack. It was none other than Joseph Kent on the end of that one, and I think he's got four sacks this year, which is the most we've ever had. But now it is time for us to take care of things offensively, and on second and seven, it's just an easy throw for us to make, but that drop was almost into an interception. And Ryan Pace can never have a good start for us. Matt Land is open there, though, and he has so much speed coming off of it, which is exactly what you want to see. I don't think he's getting anywhere with this option run, but maybe he can spin, and it's too bad that he only has 55 speed. All tied up at zero at the end of the first quarter, but we're hoping for a little bit better here in the second, and that pitch was read perfectly. They deserve to be taunting us after that, and I'm hoping that this isn't an interception on third down, but I think we have to go over towards the sidelines to Carlos, and it is dropped. That is unfortunate, but we can always try to pin them back inside the five, which is what we should be doing, and I think that landed on the one-yard line. We could get our first ever safety in program history here, and Grand Rapids University has done it. I am so proud of this freshman defense. They are all developing so well. We also have Fowler on this return, which is scary if he's able to slip out of it, and our team performing this well makes me so happy as he has some space and he's fighting for the first. I'm telling you, by the time we are actually able to compete for championships in this series, I'm gonna be feeling some type of way, but that's still a long grind away from being something that's realistic and we have to take care of business. Even though we got the safety, we're already in a third and seven situation, which is going for only a few, so we have to have an answer on fourth and two, and I think we're gonna go over the middle of the field to our tight end, but I was not sure if I could trust Ryan Pace to put that ball there. It happened so quick, but we're already midway through the second quarter, and we have got to get more than a field goal on this drive, so we're taking the hitch route, and now we're handing it off to Wilson, who just got blown up. He's gonna have one more chance to reach the end zone, which he is able to do, and after forcing an incompletion on first down, we've gotten them to a second and 10, where Julian Allen went nowhere. Third down and 12 now. I don't think this play is gonna do anything that comes close to reaching the marker, and we might as well take a timeout, because Toledo's giving us a chance to get even more points on the board versus them, but very quickly, they got us to a third and 10, where I'm pretty sure they're gonna get the stop on us unless Matt Land catches that, and it's intercepted by Alls. I can't believe that we just turned it over when I said we couldn't do it. Being too aggressive there could come back to bite us in the end, which is scary, but we have to trust our defense. And on second and 10, we've sent a blitz up the middle, which didn't get in in time, but I think we're gonna stop him short of reaching the marker. And how did 45 get out of there? Andrew Monroe, please make the tackle. And we need to recoup because things are going bad fast. As long as the most that gets a field goal, it won't be the end of the world. Steven Anderson brings him down. And it's third and 15, where they would have to reach the end zone if they wanted to pull this off, but they're going to. The deep safety on that side of the field decided that he did not want to cover in that situation. And Ryan Pace has already thrown one interception, so he might as well risk throwing another while we try and get more points before the half. 17 seconds left now. We just got back-to-back -back massive gains, and Matt Land is going to create separation on 34, but it's into a pick, and that's like the fifth time it's happened this year. They should just be running it out, taking it to the half, but it is super frustrating to see, and oh my gosh, he almost took that one to the crib. We had all of the momentum in the world. Now we're gonna go into the half only up two, but at least freshman Justin Johnson picked up a sack, and it's time for us to start establishing the run offensively, because we've done a terrible job of doing that today, and that is one of the reasons it's still close. Ryan Wilson's in for this next carry where he could have gotten a good block there, but because he didn't, he lost a yard. And now it looks like they're gonna bring in a blitz on us, which Ryan Pace was not ready for. Third and 19. It is gonna take a miracle to pick this one up, but I think we just did it. And right back to the run, we should be going, but it was a pass play when it was supposed to be a run, and that's not going for anything. That definitely threw me off a little bit, but we're gonna try to get Ben Fowler into space. And this is another third and long. We've already picked up one on this drive, but Ryan Wilson is gonna get open on the halfback wheel route, and 
he's going to take this one all the way to the three. He might have gotten caught, but he has a chance to reach the end zone himself. And we'll see if he can make it in on second and goal, which he did, putting us back up by nine points. And Andrew Monroe just strapped up. Here on second and nine, I was expecting the run, and I was ready to shoot the gap with Steven Anderson if needed. But it wasn't, as it's now third down, and he got cooked on that left side of the field. His coverage stats must not be the best. It's nice that we have a two-possession lead, but we also have to maintain it. And on second and six, I'm trying to use her with Jermaine Wayne, which means he could get another sack this year, but he doesn't get it. We forced the fumble, and Johnson picked it up. That is what we like to see out of our defense. And there's no reviews on the play, so we're going to get it and start another drive. Ben Fowler is inches away from breaking off another massive run. But until we pick up this third down, we can't try it again, and I'm just going to feed it straight to Scott Thomas. I thought this route was going to be more towards the sidelines, but he still made sure to hold on to the ball. And now that I'm feeling this confident, I want to take a deep shot to him where he beat number 12 deep, and that is a beautiful throw from Ryan Pace. There's a couple games left in the year, and he's already broken his record from last season, and we could go up by three possessions, which we are going to do. Now we can start to play some soft coverage since a bowl game is on the line, and we want to clinch it with this win, and as long as we're not giving up anything big, they can have that all day. I will say, at least on this third down, I do feel like we should be aggressive, and Andrew Monroe almost came away with it. What a perfect third quarter that was for us. We went into it only up 9-7, to seven, and we're going to leave it with the ball and a 24-7 to seven lead, and I think we're clinching a bowl game. Our entire focus in the fourth quarter is simply going to be on running the football down Toledo's throats, and maybe we'll find some more running plays that work well for us. We're pitching this one last second, but that was stupid because it wasn't worth the risk in that situation. Ben Fowler must not get tired because this is his fourth straight run, and now we got Ryan Wilson out there who isn't going to get much on this either, but all is good. It is third and nine where we can continue to move the chains if Hackett fights for it, and normally I wouldn't leave Chew Clock on for this long, but we're flying through the fourth quarter, and we should since we're already up three possessions. I feel like this is a good scenario for us to just run out the clock as quickly as possible, but if you all don't like that, I can adjust it in future episodes. Ryan Wilson gets a few more, and what's crazy is they're not even taking timeouts, so they've given up in this game. We can actually just take a quarterback kneel to end it, and Grand Rapids is really bowl eligible. It's only season three, so I wasn't expecting it, but it's something that could change the course of recruiting in the future for us, because right now we can only go after guys from Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan, and they have to be three stars or below, but once we win one bowl game, there are no longer any more restrictions, and that means we could always take our shot at trying to reel in a five star, but we have to hope that we get a good matchup in our bowl, and look at our future projections now. As for the bowl projections, it looks like we're supposed to play San Diego State, and they've only got three losses, so I'm a little worried about that. A lot can change over the next couple of weeks, though, and Northern Illinois is coming off of a loss to Central Michigan, so it looks like a Mac school is not going to make the playoffs, and Western Michigan also lost, which is why they're not ranked, but I'm okay with that since we're facing them. We've traveled up to play at the Hilltopper Stadium, and they're 8-3, and three, so this is going to be one of our toughest games, but what follows this is a rematch versus Michigan, and I'm going to try to get Ryan Pace into a rhythm early by taking the drag underneath, but I swear he always misses those throws, and that one's actually caught. We'll also try to mix in the option, but they were prepared for it, and back to passing we go, where I'm afraid to throw it any more than five yards, so we're going to go to Fowler, and they're trying to strip the ball out of his hands. He did a fantastic job of holding on, though, and now Ryan Wilson's going to catch it on third down. Please get to the outside, and his slow speed was not enough to do it. Well, we're going to have to pin them back, but at least we have a chance to do that. I would love to start their drive inside like the five, and it looks like they've also committed a penalty, so even though the punt didn't go far enough, we've still got them pinned back, and since they're down here on the goal line, we can be very aggressive because they don't want to take any risks, and that's a stop. It was the easiest three and out of all time for us, and the punt's only only going to reach midfield where Ryan Wilson's going to catch this one and then hit this outer edge, which should get us to about the 35. It seems like we are on pace to open up this game better than we normally would, and Scott Thomas is going to come around on a drag route that we're instantly going to hit for another first down. The Hilltoppers are another team that we have never beaten in this series, but this could be the year to do it, and I just hope we don't regress next season after all of our seniors graduate, but Matt Land's going to drop it into an interception, and this is where we challenge the catch just hoping for the best, but it's going to take a lot for the refs to overturn it. If you slow it down, the ball probably hit the ground, but it's one that's too close for me to be able to tell, and I can't blame the refs for not overturning it. We also had an offsides call, which is why they get first and five to open it up, and I am ready to send a blitz up this hole where their quarterback's gonna try and take off on us, but we're bringing him down. Hayden Veltkamp doesn't understand that right now our team's playing better than ever before, and we are prepared to get as many stops as needed, but LT Sanders is gonna break one free, and that's a missed tackle from Steven Anderson. I knew that the best player on our team was probably gonna get one of these, but I was hoping that it wouldn't come this soon in the game. And there's a reason that we have never beaten the Hilltoppers because they're normally very good, but I'm gonna try to change things quickly by going for the deep pass and there wasn't enough time. I am convinced that we could have pulled it off as well, but at least we're gonna pick up the first down to Carlos Castillo. And there's so much space on the left side of the field for Ben Fowler to hit, but they're all over him. I gotta admit the Hilltoppers are playing us tough, but they're the caliber of opponent that we're gonna
going to get in a bowl game, and Ben Fowler gets the first. That's great to see, but on this next one, we don't have any time. And there's nothing that Ryan Pace can do in that situation. Now we're going over to Matt Land, but that's risky because the senior has dropped a ton of balls into interceptions this year, and I wonder how many of Ryan Pace's picks are actually his fault because he seems to do a good job. I know he's completed a lot more of his passes than I'd expect him to, but Ryan Wilson lost a yard on that run, so he had to get this. And evidently, Ben Fowler needed a break, but that is not a good thing. Whenever we hit those halfback stretch plays, we want somebody in there with speed, and Steven Arrington comes away with the touchdown grab. The sophomore might be our number one receiver next year on this offense, and on second and eight, it's another run where they got exactly what they needed, 15 slipped through that hole and broke another tackle. Don't tell me that he's about to take this one to the house. We need Robinson to catch up to him right here. And that was hard to see, but now they're hitting us with the RPO, and Goodwin missed the tackle. Steven Anderson's not going to make the tackle either. So it took everybody a second, but the offenses in this game are starting to open up, and you have got to be kidding me. I think the interception slider's on like 30, so there's no reason that we should be dropping all of these passes. It's not like it's on zero. But I would love to know how many picks we would have had if our DBs were able to catch the ball. And that was a terribly executed third down play. That's good for us, though, as they have to kick a field goal. And if we could get enough time to get this throw off, we might have a touchdown. But our offensive line isn't good enough yet, so that's why we've gone away from using play action during this season. And it's made a pretty big difference, so you all came up clutch in the comments about that. But after the bad throw from Ryan Pace, we're punting it back to them, and that did not bounce the best. With two minutes left in the first half, Veltkamp had plenty of time back there, and Jamar Robinson dropped another. So my guess is if we were able to catch all of those, we'd have like 15 picks this season. And I think instead, we have like three, which is crazy. It's a massive difference, but maybe one day in the future, we will get luckier. They didn't get that first down there, actually, and this could be the one that we have been waiting for. Anderson comes away with it. It's his first one. And the longer that the season goes on, the better that freshman Steven Anderson gets. He's going to be a great free safety for us for the next four years. We got that one out in time to Ryan Wilson, but we couldn't even get the first down, so he'll have to do it here. And there's only 33 seconds left in the half, but I see a wide open Matt Land, and I'm not sure who was supposed to be on him, but this has to be the craziest reaction that I have ever seen to a juke move. He literally just froze up, and Ryan Pace is looking around the field. He sees somebody in the back of the end zone, and what a play. I could have sworn that we were about to get in there, but instead we're not going to. And I hope one of our tight ends can get open on their crossing routes, but I'm not sure I wanted to force it, which means we're going to play it smart, take our field goal, and go into the half tie. That's not the worst thing in the world since they're sitting at 8-3, and three, and our defense has had no issues in stopping the Hilltoppers, but they had somebody wide open there, and I bet this route bounce is going to destroy us. It's Easton Messer coming down with it, and they got more passing yards on one play than they did during the entire first half against us. Easton Messer has destroyed us in some of our previous matchups, so I am scared that he's starting to get things going, but I'm going to try to send in a blitz with Ben Fowler, and that was one of the worst executed plays I've ever had. I'd like to act like that didn't just happen right there. Steven Anderson gets in, and he is having a great game, as he's already gotten one interception along with three tackles for losses, and that's going to go over to their best wide receiver who won't get free here. So it is third and four. They're obviously going to pass it instead of run, and I knew that was going to get open. Call me LeBron the way that I just made that up off of the top of my head. And if they send a blitz here, we might have a chance at hitting Scott Thomas deep, but we can't risk it because our offensive line cannot hold up for that long. And no matter what, I'm just going to hand this off to Ben Fowler, where he had to spin that guy out, and he's also going to get around this one to get 10 yards. There's no question that he is still better than what Ryan Wilson is right now, but I've been seeing number three in the game a lot recently, and that's a problem since his seven carries have only gone for nine yards. Are you serious? We just had another drop pass into an interception, and they're going to take this one back to the house as well. Thank goodness the refs are reviewing it, and they called this one themselves. I didn't have to challenge it, but the play stood, so it won't matter. I would also love to know how many of those we have had in this video, because that feels like our fifth or sixth, and it seems like our chances of beating Western Kentucky are starting to go out the window, but we're only down by two possessions, so this is something that we could technically come back from, and I should know that I'm in trouble whenever I start trying to scramble with Ryan Pace. I wanted to run a halfback screen to Ben Fowler on third and 22, but instead it's Ryan Wilson out there, so they're gonna get another stop, and our defense is gonna need to get like a pick six or something, or else we are cooked. We are going to lose to the Hilltoppers for the third year in a row, and they own us, so I would love to get this max school off of our schedule next season. I am sick and tired of them being able to destroy us, and they just keep passing for more. So that's a brutal ending to the quarter, and I'm gonna try to do something with Steven Anderson forcing a sack, but we didn't generate enough pressure. Now I'm using him as a user, and there's just too much time. It's like we have to send five people at them if we want to force the ball out quickly, and you know that Joseph Kent's gonna get himself another, but I'm afraid that it might be a little bit too late for that to matter, and we're bringing down LT Saunders. That forces a defensive stop, and we might as well just let this one bounce into the back of the end zone, but we're gonna have to score pretty quickly if we want to stay in this game, and that's a tight 
28th route. It looks like they're going with some more zone on this one. So we can dot that up underneath the Scott Thomas breaking away for eight. And I would love to take some deep shots on this team, but I'm also scared of it. But we'll never know what would have happened because there wasn't enough time anyway. And look at Steven Arrington somehow getting the first down. Now I want to try and roll out with Ryan Pace to hit the corner route, but I keep forgetting he's slow. And we shouldn't be mixing in play action. So I'm just going to quickly get it out to Anthony Weber. Third and inches, but it won't be the end of the world if we don't pick it up. You know that Fowler is going to get open on that side of the field. And right now, Carlos Castillo is blue in the face, but I'm not worried about it because he's still able to catch this ball and get to the 10. Our drive continues down the field where Steven Arrington's going to hold on to the daggone football. And it is time for our defense to lock up and stop the run, but they've gone with the pass instead, and I can't believe that. That's not what you'd expect out of them in that situation, but they're going to do it again. And surely they got to be handing it off sooner rather than later, which they did. But we have forced a third and six, and I have a blitz ready dialed in, but they went with the pass. They have a halfback screen out to LT Saunders, and we cannot make the tackle on him, but we're knocking him out of bounds. I feel like that gives us a slight chance, but they're going with the pass instead of the run. And now we have a real chance. I'm going to continue to run commit where we get him in the backfield. And I can't imagine they actually passed the ball on third and 11, but they did. And they threw it right to our defense. We just need the Hilltoppers to have a bad kicker, but it seems like they don't. And we needed to hold on to that interception, but we weren't able to. So now we're going to go to Matt Land where he drops it straight into Davis Jr.'s hands. Wonderful. That is the third time it's happened in this game. And the computer just decided that we weren't going to take down Western Kentucky, no matter how well we played. That was one of the most frustrating things we've ever had to go through. And it just wasn't meant to be as we're going into the Michigan game at six and five. Now our new bowl projection is against James Madison. And in case you were wondering, this is what the final standings in the Mac look like. But something important to note is Michigan just lost to Ohio State. So if we could somehow manage to upset them, we'd knock them out of the 12 team playoffs and maybe we'll cause some chaos to end the year. But it's going to be difficult in a packed out big house. And we're going to open things up by handing it off to Ben Fowler. We've gotten the right blocks and that means this is going to be a big rush. But the refs are already trying to help out the Wolverines. And that holding call makes this a first and 18 now where Ryan Pace is doing what he does best. He's missing throws early on and half of his receivers, he's not even sure what button they are, but he's still going to find Kelvin Hackett, the sophomore tight end. And I couldn't tell you if he has ever completed the first pass in this video, but we're doing well now. So you just got to force him to sling the rock and let's go up the seam to our other tight end. We have nothing to lose in this game and we did well against Michigan last year, but it's an inaccurate pass from him. And that's pretty disheartening, but it is what it is. Tyler Morse is coming away with a catch already where he knocked over one of our DBs and Jeremiah Wayne's going to have to catch him and bring him down, but he isn't able to do it either. He's shedding another tackle. And are you kidding me? Someone just stop him. We could be in for a very long performance versus the Wolverines. And it's now quarterback Darius Warren that's at the helm. But we do have the fact that Ryan Pace shredded this defense until the pick on the last drive going in our favor. And Kelvin Hackett somehow got hurt on that play. We can try to hand it off, but I'm not sure if it's going to work against the Wolverines. But I do know the halfback screens will as it did last year. And this one's going over to Wilson who isn't getting anything. There's a sea of maize in the crowd and they're going to go with a halfback draw on their first play of this drive. But we're about to find out if they're prepared to handle a blitz and it turns out they are. After keeping it so close last year, my expectations for this matchup are pretty high, but they've been running an entirely different offense with JJ McCarthy now graduated. And on second and six, Steven Anderson wasn't able to fill that hole and neither were any of our linebackers. Paul Cabana is a sick name, but I'm hoping that we can eventually stop him. And it's going to be another run where they have a backup in the game. They've gotten some fresh legs out there and you can definitely tell. That level of explosiveness makes us have to run commit on third down. And I'm surprised at how well that blitz worked. Here on first and 10, we're going to laser it up to seam for an instant 25. And I swear the Wolverines defense isn't that good. The passes just have to be caught while also being put in the right place by Ryan Pace because whenever he misses them, it's bad. Third down and 10 where the halfback angle route to Ben Fowler got open. He comes away with it. And I don't care that it's going to be marked short at fourth and inches because we're going for it no matter what. And we're picking it up. The longer we can stay in it, the better for us. And that run did not work. It got blown up. So we're going to just take our check down. And what was that throw? The inaccuracies are so frustrating to see. And that's another bad one. So we're back to relying on Clement to pin them back. And this is one of his worst punts yet as Tyler Morris caught it, comes away with it. And he also got some perfect blocks. We are going to just knock him down. But that was way too close to being taken for a touchdown. And they picked up our pressure perfectly off of the blitz where Clemens sheds the tackle and takes it to the crib. All of a sudden, it's 14 to zero. It happened so quick. We've played decent, but Ryan Pace has also been inaccurate. So he's got to start hitting his targets more often. And we have nothing to lose in this game. So I'm just going to let him sling it down the field as much as he wants. He's got three different senior wide receivers that I'm sure would love some more targets. And on second and 10, we are going to look in Matt Land's direction for when he breaks that route. But that was the most underthrown ball in school history. And the placement of some of these passes have been atrocious. At least on paper, Michigan's the hardest team we face, but that really
really doesn't mean that much because it was Notre Dame and then we went out and beat them. They're going for the deep shot against us though. And that's the one time you can't test Rodney Cronin. We've actually held them pretty well, but our offense is struggling. And maybe this is the play where we can start to get something going as it's Steven Arrington. And he couldn't get anywhere after he caught that ball, but it is all good because I see Scott Thomas off of his corner route. There's two DBs trying to chase him and neither of them are going to catch him. He's taking this one to the house. We needed that so bad because all of a sudden we are right back in this game and that's some clamps. Tremaine Wayne was not letting him hold on to that football. Now he's hitting him and it's crazy how big of a difference he makes for this team even though he's only a 65 overall as we just forced a three and out. We are right back in this game as we're only trailing by seven to the Wolverines. Carlos Castillo comes away with this one for another massive game and I'm just going to continue to sling it with no worries in the world. We might have had a deep shot and this is going to be a good one from Ryan Pace to McGowan our tight end who goes to the two. But what is even happening right now because earlier on he was missing the hardest passes and he just made back to back to back great throws. The more I try to understand it the more confused I get. So I'm just gonna have to hope that the game continues to bless us and neither of those corner routes should have gotten that open but there's not much that we can do about it. Kent tried to force a sack there before they got it out and I'm all about trying to get pressure in but I think we sent a bit too much at them as more comes away with it. We should have just sent like three and forced them to take stuff underneath and I did leave somebody open but Davis Warren couldn't hook up with him so it's all good and we got cooked. The offenses in this game are starting to really turn things up but that was a terrible play and there's only 13 seconds left now. They have a guy in motion. They're wasting precious time. I hope that they screw this up somehow and I could not stick with him. To be honest after how we started I'll take being down by seven but they're getting to start the third quarter with the ball where they've already picked up a few but then they just lost it back so it is now third and ten where I'm not sure what Warren's gonna try and hit but we have somebody all over it and we have forced a three and out on the Wolverines. Wilson fumbled that ball for a second but I've left him back there on the returns because I want him to keep on developing and now he's out there to take this handoff where he only got a few yards but we could pick up this third and nine where Ryan Pace sails the ball. I hope during the offseason which is coming up soon his accuracy improves a ton. Tyler Morse is going to catch that one off of the bounce as well and he's had multiple good returns and the Wolverines are starting their drive on our side of the field which is a bit worrisome especially since that goes for 20. I'd prefer if they didn't get a two possession lead on us but there's not much I can do about it now and that was pretty embarrassing but we're going to go over to our tight end which did not work out in our favor. Ryan Pace is going to try and hit Fowler here to make a play himself but he couldn't get anywhere so it is now third and ten where we're going up the seam back to McGowan and I am so thankful that that paid off but Land just dropped it into another interception. Is that like the third or fourth time he has done that this year? This is starting to get ridiculous. He might be a school legend for some but I'm making him our fourth wide receiver and I should have done that a while ago, but he's been riding the wave of the fact that he had like 370 receiving yards versus Eastern Michigan. I honestly just feel bad for Ryan Pace because so many of his interceptions haven't been his fault. And if he transferred out because of it or something, that would be the worst thing in the world. But Steven Arrington came away with this football for a big one. And they're also going to hit Michigan with the penalty. But wait, it says clipping and it's on us. Also, why on earth was Zach Keys on the field in the first place? Because this is our backup quarterback. And he's the reason that this has been moved back to the 41 yard line. Steven Arrington has looked pretty solid though and I'm going to continue to force feed him the ball but he has to get a rest break at some point which means Matt Land is back out there on the field and that should have been picked. Even if we find a way to reach the end zone we're still going to be behind by two possessions and I just hope that whoever we get in our bowl matchup isn't that good of a team. To stay in it we've got to hold the Wolverines at some point and I was all over where they wanted to throw it but it didn't make a lick of a difference as they still picked it up and are you kidding me Davis Warren just trucked us like that? and he's still up as well. I thought the play was over, but no, he continues to go. At this point, the writing's gotta be on the wall. Ben Fowler can't make that tackle either. And if you remember how our season ended against Michigan State last year, this honestly isn't that bad, but it just stinks that this is one of the final times we get to use this great offensive group of guys, and they've elevated the program to a level that I thought would take even longer to reach. Our only hope in staying in this game is scoring on this drive against Michigan, and Scott Thomas just broke free from that one, but the refs just don't wanna see us succeed. And Matt Land was was the one that committed that clipping penalty. Steven Arrington comes away with this pass. But no matter what we do, I feel like it's not going to be enough, and let's just fit it into that tight window. I'd say that it's very encouraging that the sophomore's been coming down with all of these passes. We also just got it to Sauls, and he's a senior that never touches it, but he's been on the roster the entire time. Just 10 more yards to get it back within two possessions against them, and we'll let Ryan Wilson try to finish this one off, where I have no idea how they gave him credit for that touchdown, and there's the review from the refs. I mean, he didn't come 
close to reaching the end zone, so his touchdown isn't going to count, and Ben Fowler gets to come in and steal it. We're also going for the two-point conversion, where Ryan Pace is just going to thread that needle, and he put it right where it needed to be, but it wasn't held on to. We weren't able to recover the onside kick, and they're also about to run the option for a big gain. Davis Warren just broke that tackle, and we are going to stop him short, but in the end, they'd reach the end zone, and they'd seal a big win over us, so there wasn't much left there for me to mention, and maybe one day we'll take down the Wolverines, but for now, it's conference championship week, and both of these teams took us down. Western Kentucky tried to keep up, but Northern Illinois is having too good of a season to lose now, and Texas A&M's quarterback won the Heisman. As for All-Americans, somehow freshman Steven Anderson made first-team All-NCAA, and he was also the only one to make the first or second-team All-Mac. It kind of makes sense since Ben Fowler and Ryan Wilson split a lot of stats, and none of our receivers had the best of seasons, with Matt Land regressing every year since he was a sophomore, and Ryan Pace throwing even more interceptions, but not that many were his fault. 20's ridiculous, but when you take this many sacks, you gotta get it out quick. And not that many players had many tackles besides Jeremiah Wayne and Steven Anderson, but sack-wise, I love to see all of the different freshmen running up the numbers. And I hate to say it, but Ben Fowler regressed both offensively and defensively. Michigan would get revenge against Ohio State to make the championship in the playoffs, and if they could beat the Heisman winner, they'd win it all. But I'd hate to see another school from our state pull it off. And thankfully, they got blown out by Texas A&M, which makes sense, considering we kept it close with them. Connor Wiegman literally had the season of his dreams, carrying the Aggies on a 16-0 national championship run, and in case you were wondering, our bowl game is against Wyoming, so we've got a decent chance of winning this one, but they are the favorites going into it. We're not playing in the most prestigious bowl in the world, but there's a lot on the line if we're able to win the Arizona Bowl, and on the first play of the game, Lowry is already trying to pass it on our defense, which I guess he did successfully, but they only got like 10 yards, and DQ James is going to take his first handoff of the game, where Jeremiah Wayne is not able to bring him down. Ben Fowler also misses the tackle, and I think that one is going to go to the crib. I swear, we are always due to give up something like that. And this is the last time a lot of the players on this offense are going to see the field. We have so many seniors like Mr. Ben Fowler out there, so we need to make sure that they go out with a bang getting the win. And Ryan Wilson's going to be our starting halfback next season, but I'm not sure if he's ready for that. Here on third and six, we have somebody motioning over, but Ryan Pace couldn't get it out. And this is not how I was hoping we would open it up against Wyoming, but they are a good team as well because they made a bowl game and we have just got to stop them on this punt return. I'm a little terrified of DQ James getting more handoffs because he took his first one to the house and he also just fit through that hole. But thankfully he got tripped up and on third and 10, Davis is going to get the sack. What a play from freshman TJ Davis because now Wyoming has no choice but to punt us the ball and we got to make sure that this doesn't bounce out at the one. Oh my gosh, Wilson. No, 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 no. They just recovered that in the end zone for a touchdown and I have never done that on NCAA football before. Instead of picking it up, he just let it bounce off of his arm and go into the end zone and then he missed it. I can't believe it, but it has been almost no time and we are trailing 14 to zero. So we need Ben Fowler to pull off something big and that's what he is going to do. Swerving to the inside and taking it to the 35. The senior just broke his own record with this run and I am so mad at how we have started this off with that throw being very inaccurate. I don't even want to give a carry to Ryan Wilson after what we've experienced. At least we're able to hit Carlos Castillo for this big game. And on first and goal, Ben Fowler takes the handoff where he just spun out that defender and I'm going to miss him so much. I don't think we're going to have somebody that can move like that for a very long time. And I can't imagine where this team would be right now if we weren't able to bring him in in year one. We got so lucky he was a three-star Juco recruit out of the three states we could recruit in. And then last second, he actually chose to come to our school. I just cannot believe it. On second and five, I usered that open receiver perfectly. They're going to try to bomb us deep and it's knocked away. But Rodney Cronin's had a problem with catching those and it is very frustrating. On third down, we sent a blitz in their direction where we're getting the sack. I thought at least their quarterback somehow broke free and even Ben Fowler isn't catching it. This time, I think I'm just going to move out of the way with Ryan Wilson. I don't want to risk it. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Whenever Ben Fowler's in the game, we are going to feed him. So I'm hoping he can do a little bit better here on second and 10 and he wasn't able to. Third and nine now where we don't have anything for the first down, but we do have a wide open Matt Land deep and I don't know how he got this open, but I'm not going to complain. That's a tutty. We might have started off terribly, but it is already 14 to 14. That is a good way to bounce back. And I'm going to try to get another big play from TJ Davis, but he was not able to get in there. Jalen Sargent just broke multiple tackles and he's taking that one to the 35. We're just going to keep on applying pressure to Wyoming and this ball, come on. Jermaine Wayne, you are right there. How much closer could you have been? I literally don't think we could have done anything else differently. They faked us out with that fullback dive to DQ James. And Wyoming has certainly come to play in this game, but so have we as we're going to try and take that. I think the pass to Matt Land was the deep 
deepest throw we've ever seen Ryan Pace make, but it's taken the Cowboys no time to get us to a third and eight where Ryan Wilson is not going to pick up this first down. That's a three and out, which is not what you want to see, but maybe this punt can go our way. Their returner didn't make a play on it, and perfect. At least we're going to make them work 85 yards down the field if they want to score, and DQ James is going crazy. Okay, thank goodness. If we didn't make that saving tackle, they would have had another touchdown, but Glyenborg just destroyed Ben Fowler with that corner route, and our defense is returning to the form that they were in at the beginning of the season. Second and 14, though, Kimber had a great tackle for loss on that play, and DQ James came away with the football. But all is good because it is third and seven where that slant should not get open in time, and are you kidding me? We had multiple guys in the area, and I'm just going to blame our defensive line for not generating enough pressure quick enough. Oh my goodness. DQ James is literally going insane right now, and I feel like we have got to score points before the end of the half if we want to make sure we stay in it. But we're also going to need to take a deep shot at the same time, and we're not able to do that on this play. Ryan Pace's inaccuracies are starting to drive me crazy, and I didn't get that one out. So it's unfortunate, but we're just going to trust our defense, and maybe we can force a turnover or something because they can't run it. So I'm honestly not as worried as I would be if DQ James was going to be getting fed the rock, and it's time to clamp up on this third and five where they are just going to go with another drag. But we held them, and I even took a timeout because I want to give our team a chance to actually score some points, which is possible with someone like Ben Fowler. We're just going to have to give him the handoff and hope for the best, but he doesn't get this. So it is time for round two where the blocks are lining up, but he got tripped. We could probably take a deep shot as well and just hope for the best. There is no way that this actually pays off. Thomas is going to get caught. And what an unfortunate ending to the first half. But we get ball to start the third quarter and Wyoming had some lucky stuff happen. I feel confident that we can come back in this game. You know that I have to hit Carlos Castillo if he's going to get that open. And now Ryan Pace is going to look over in Scott Thomas's direction where he has toasted his man. He's going to float the ball right over number 19 for a touchdown. That is the arm strength and accuracy that I want to see out of Ryan Pace. And I'm pretty sure it's one of the first deep shots he's ever taken, but it was beautiful. And come on, their quarterback literally just tried to give us the ball, but the game wouldn't let us take it. Now Sargent's getting open again, and he has broken another tackle. He does at least it once on every single play, but I'm not going to go to bed on a loss to the Cowboys. Right now it's 5 a.m. DQ James scores again. And this has been one of those nights where I'm having so much fun playing this dynasty that I will just record instead of sleep. We cannot end on a loss though. There's no way that we can do that. And I want to go ahead and just record season four right after this, but I have to wait to see the comments on the season three video. And it is now third and 11 where we're going to just go with the car route and hope for the best. But because we didn't pick it up, we have to be aggressive. And thank you, Wilson, for coming away with this football and breaking free. That is what I want to see out of our freshman running back. I feel like there have been so many different broken plays in this game. And this is a great way to end the year, but only if we can start getting some stops on the Cowboys. We know that we've given ourselves plenty of time to do so, but I don't want DQ James to break off another one, and that's a great tackle. I think we've seen a lot of great things out of freshman RJ Davis, but somehow DQ James got the first down, and he's still getting up. He's giving me Michigan State's Nathan Carter vibes, and there's their backup running back, so you gotta know that he's taking this one to the house because he's got himself a fresh set of legs. There's nothing that we can do about that, but besides trying to score and respond back pretty quickly, and we're at the point in the game where I don't even want to hand it off because our best player's losing five yards, and we've had so many breakaway plays through the air with this one going back to Ryan Wilson, catching another one and getting the first down. We might have a chance at getting something going on this corner route that was filthy from Carlos Castillo, and I don't even think I'm saying his name right, but I'm giving it my best effort, and I need Steven Arrington here, but the Wyoming defense got to us first, and the worst part is the sophomore was wide open over the middle of the field. He'll catch this one, but now it's the end of the third quarter, and on third and eight, my eyes are staying glued on Ben Fowler, who had a lot of space there, but it's still fourth and inches. I wish I called quarterback sneak instead of this, and if they could have held us there, that probably would have been game for us, but all is good, and why are they biting on Ryan Pace in this situation? If we're going to get the ball back, though, we have to figure out how to stop Wyoming, and that's not simple because they've done whatever they've wanted to against our defense, and we should have just tested our luck at an onside kick because this guy named DQ James is just destroying us. I don't know if he's a generated recruit or he's somebody that Wyoming has in real life, but he has been a problem, and Ben Fowler was right there. I'm spamming triangle, but Jalen Sargent just catches another football, and oh, there's the backup again, who's somehow perfect. We have done everything that we can offensively, but I think our defense is going to let all of our seniors down in this one, and I cannot believe that that was marked as a third in inches. We need this man-to-man -man coverage to not stick like glue, and it didn't because Scott Thomas got a lot of separation, but the problem is there's only three minutes remaining in this game, and we have another deep route open. Normally, I don't care that much for bowl games, but if you like offensive shootouts, this is one of
one of the best ones of all time. And the question is, do we go for the onside kick? I almost did it, but I figure we got a better chance of stopping them normally, and that's Justin Johnson. What a sack from the freshman coming up big time for our defense. DQ James is going to get 11, though, and we're going to burn our first time out, which means we're selling out for the run on third down, but they actually hit us with a pass, and I can't believe it. In that situation, the computer normally never does something like that, and I'm literally just run committing, but it's not going to matter. We can sell out for it one more time, but DQ James picks it up, and that is going to be it. We just put up 42 points in our bowl game and lost, so we're still going to have recruiting restrictions here at Grand Rapids, and I don't ever want to hear the name DQ James again. Brian Pace literally played perfect, throwing for 468 yards and four touchdowns, with Ben Fowler rushing for 86, and our three senior receivers going out with a bang, but none of it matters. Literally every school receiving record belongs to senior Matt Land, who's graduating, and there's no way that anybody can forget about Jeremiah Wayne either, or Ben Fowler, who controls all of our rushing records. Brian Pace continues to set the bar high for the next quarterback, and it's time to say goodbye to a lot of amazing seniors. Obviously, we've already covered some of the big ones, and I have to mention Zach Keys because this guy did help us get our first win ever, but also Juco Scott Thomas and Carlos Castillo were both awesome. It's just weird to see so many big names go, like John Micah Hackett and Matt Land, who did regress this year, and obviously none of them got drafted, and I'm shocked that our recruiting class finished all the way down at number 55, because at one point it was ranked number 17, but we can only go after three stars from three different states, and I think freshman quarterback Brian Johnson is going to put the pressure on Ryan Pace. It's a little disappointing, but fullback Thomas Jones only becomes a 72 overall tight end, and to make sure that Rodney Cronin stays on the field, we're going to move him to strong safety. The biggest moment is seeing how everybody progressed, though, and I'm seeing a lot of positive stuff like Brad Johnson jumping up to a 78 and a plus 7 from Chase Durham. Now, what I don't like is Kurt Butler didn't go up anything, and Ryan Wilson actually got jumped by senior Andrew Cardi, but our receiving core got a lot better, which was much needed, and we might as well redshirt Joseph Kent because Chase Durham's even better now. I don't know what season four is going to have in store, but I'm excited for the future still because Ryan Pace isn't the only quarterback that we have with potential now, and I don't know what we're going to do with Brian Johnson over the next two years, but I'll be reading the comments as always, and thank you boys for so much support on this series. I will see you all in season four.